it's time to do the thing! Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew Friday Edition with Darcy! It's me, Darcy! <laughs> Where we play new games on classic consoles, uh, particularly the Atari 2600. Yeah, it's one classic console. One classic Yay. console. <laughs> but I like saying that, it sounds good. It sounds more expensive. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we I mean, aren't we... limited to console, we're we... consoles. Many consoles. Many. I mean, technically, yes. Several consoles. I, I have played the Coleco on Two. the show. Yep. I think Two is that's about it. Plural, that's enough. I don't think I've played. I definitely have not played the Vectrex on it because that's a whole thing to record that. And the Intellev in television, I haven't either. But they're both the possibility in the future. If something I guess you comes could just up, point a camera at it. Point really. a camera at it is what you do. That's what I have to do. Yeah. yeah, and maybe I'll do that just for fun. Do are a there, do a Vectrex day? Are there uh, Vectrex emulators? Uh, <coughs> yes, there are. Yeah. I mean, they're but, not perfect but that's, because it's very different. Like, I mean, I, I think a camera is better <laughs> when it comes to Vetrex. I think a camera would be better than emulating for yeah, sure. Yeah. I, I. Oh yes. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah like yeah. it totally. Looks the thing different. that makes a Vectrex a Vectrex is not so much the games. It's I mean, the, the games. Uh, the games are great, but and I just mean. I mean, it's the way it does the games, and yeah. the, it's you can't like it's so unique that you're yeah. drawing with straight lines like this yeah i and i you, remember i remember like video games in the arcade and just being like wow yeah. like it's because they could do scalable perfect 3d graphics yeah and and um you what's know, the pixel? thing where you get the what's that called it's <laughs> not what? enough no i don't more no, information no, vectrex doesn't have it but oh jaggedy lines yeah uh, 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 uh yeah Lazing? Anti-aliasing. Anti well, aliasing. Al and you want yeah. anti-aliasing. That's right, yeah. So, so it had it without needing that. Yeah, that was yeah, always blew me away. It's not pixels like this. It's like, it's a line. It's a line. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty amazing. Anyway, watch this on 60 frames a second because we, these games. The because Atari we demand it. That's right. Atari 2600 works at 60 frames a second. <laughs> um, so welcome to everyone that is watching it live on Twitch because we broadcast uh, Wednesdays and Fridays on Twitch Live. And welcome to the people who watch on YouTube that can't watch it live. I'm trying to get my uh, name straight on my forehead. <laughs> A little bit over, away from me. Uh, there. There you go. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> Labeled perfectly. <laughs> um, so we're going to play three games today. Two of them are updates of games we played somewhat recently, hmm. um, but they're a big enough update that I thought, well, let's play them again. And you haven't played them either, so... And they're fun. And we're going to be playing a new game called Street Rod 2600. Uh, it's a port of a DOS game from 1989. And the other ones we're playing is Robot City, um, which is a port of an Odyssey 2 game, and The End, which is a port of an arcade game. So all these are brand new games. Um, so I want to thank all the people in the chat. Oh, somebody cheered. Or did they pretend to cheer? I don't know what that is. Because <laughs> it usually it looks different when somebody cheers like it's a special line. But anyway, thank you for the five cheers. <laughs> you know, people don't usually do that. It's just subscribing. Um, uh, welcome to RC70, Raymond C. The games are Thrust26. Repentless VG, Spiceware, RC70, probably said that already, and all the other people. Oh, it's real. Well, thank you very much, Games Are, for the five cheers. Oh, let's have the kitty here. Hi. Just This just is Atari. Skip, just skip right to the, the good stuff, Atari. One of the two cats we have. Just randomly named Atari. Yeah. This is the sluttier one. Yeah, he loves love. He yeah. loves to be loved. And he's not shamed by that, that no. word. And I want to thank the Twitch subscribers as well who support the show. Coconut81, Gredham's Ground Trooper, I supposed to Johnny WC23, Carl G, Croco2600, Matthias JG Santos, MK Smith, Mr. Fix, Nathan Strum, RC70, Repentless VG, Sir Catleg, Spartan581, Spiceware, who has joined us today, S. Ramirez2008, the D Train37. Uh, oh, I thought I saw the D Train37. Yep. I missed his name. Sorry about that in the chat. Uh, the Welshman89 and Tiki Dan K, and you can support the show and get your name read. Uh, you can subscribe for free if you have Amazon Prime, and you can link it to your Twitch Prime, um, and then click subscribe. And a lot of people have Amazon Prime, <clears throat> uh, especially around right now, ordering their Christmas gifts. 
on the Black Friday, spending all their monies. Um, I did actually buy something um, yesterday because people, you know, it creeps. Black Friday creeps and expands to Black Week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like every other sales holiday. I bought a new camera, digital camera. Ah. Yes. Um, a really nice um, 4K um, video not video camera. It is a still format. It's a, a mirrorless camera. It's a Sony um, A7S II. Um, so same, I can use the lenses that, actually I can't use those lenses. It's a full format mm. uh, camera. So I have to get some new lenses. And you can or can't do video with it? I can. It is actually made for video. Oh, okay. It can do 4K at 60 frames a second, which is wow. really good. Wow, has yeah. super great reviews. Looks great. Um, so we'll be upgrading the look of this very soon in the near future. I do have to find a lens first, so I have to wait a little bit on that. Oh, ArenaFoot has joined us as well. Um, but it'll look a lot better, and also it'll be super useful for the award show. Oh, yeah. Which is on February 1st, which is a Saturday uh, in the new year. Very exciting. And you haven't seen them yet. Uh, we showed them off last episode. There is the award. There you can take a look at it. 2019 Atari Homebrew Awards. And for the people who have not seen it, ah, broken. That's my copy anyway. It's okay. It's it's also there's carpet and there there's you just, go. Hold it up to the camera. Me. Ah. Oh, that's pretty close. There we go. Up, up, up. There, up. I'm looking. There. Oh, you are. Okay. It's just that there's a delay. <laughs> There you go. So I, I give um, I give <laughs> uh, an award to myself for such a good job that I do for the award show. It's for the best Atari Twenty Six Hundred Homebrew Award Show, <laughs> <laughs> and I do the best one. So we, we we get this award for ourselves, and I gave it preemptively to ourselves as well. <laughs> and I wanted the last year as well. Um, the D-Train 37, oops, sent a PM here that I should have sent somewhere else. Yeah, it didn't make sense what you typed earlier. <laughs> I had no, there's no context, uh, not really part of the conversation, but it's funny. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited about that camera. Um, Me too. Really, really cool. And then we can have really, we can, I'm not going to broadcast in 4K <laughs> because that's a lot of bandwidth. <laughs> Maybe I will. Hmm. Do you have? Uh, do I don't you have, have a 4K capture. That's the problem. Do you have um, what do you call oh, it's it? Not gonna um, work. Fiber optic in your house? Uh, no, but there's the option for that. Um, so it's did, a possibility. So you, have you had that installed here? Did no. Telus install it? The building has not been ah. uh, upgraded to fiber, but they asked the building. Ah. They asked the Strata. Say, hey, you want it? So there's going to be a debate about it. And oh, okay. Whether how, because it might be intrusive, like depending on the wire the wiring goes and how many people actually want it in the building. So those factors. Just when you do it, yes. make sure it you will mention, happen eventually. Make sure you mention to everyone uh, yes. that you know that could matter for resale and for property values because they might not care about having it, but they right. might later care about having not had it. Maybe. I, I don't think that's true, but but you're trying to get it, and some of them might be too old and 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 crotchety to there, not want it. There's a very big and age they factor need to, in this they building. They need to think about that. They need to in be the made future. to think about that. All the youngins moving in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's worth uh, presenting that as a thing. Um, because we have uh, electric uh, charging in the building now. Yeah. You know, and uh, we spearheaded that. Yep. Our our our. Uh, well, we did, my, myself and Tanya. Yeah. And so we got it outfitted for the whole parking garage. Um, one other person Which did buy awesome. into it as well. Yeah. And then they sold their, their house. And the people that moved in don't have an electric car. But they will. But they, they definitely will. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, they might not because you don't have to buy an electric car. But Eventually, they'll be outlawed, yeah. Uh, yeah. the uh, ICE cars. And, uh, well, I d th there's no reason. The <laughs> not way outlawed, thing, the, but the way things are headed right them. now, it is it is much better if in the future there's never any need to outlaw uh, yeah. ice cars. That They're would be electric will just be cheaper and yeah, awesome. It's just that you do it that way. They're right? already awesome. 
Like as there soon are as you, so many. There well, are so many Garcia reasons. And I have an electric car. Yeah. And as soon as you drive an electric car, you're like, I'm done. As this soon is as the you future. go, this as soon future. as you go forty thousand kilometers, <laughs> which is what that's like, thirty. 28,000 miles okay. and two years before your first oil change. And we need oil changes because we have a yeah. Volt and that has a, a yeah. gas engine in it. But it's we're mostly using electric. Yeah, we rarely use the that, engine. That goes to show how little... It was my first maintenance. <laughs> oh, yeah. The very first maintenance was after two years and t like like 28,000 uh, miles. It's, oh, there's it's people outfitting old, uh, old oh, cars yeah. all the and, time. And I think GM has uh, like a, a crate motor, a crate engine uh, yeah. thing. That's I don't know if it's GM. I think it might be GM. Where they has drop it, it like it's right like, in place. Take a, you take your vehicle and you toss the motor in it. It's like, yeah, it's I think that'll be awesome. That's oh, going to be yeah. so much fun. Because people love the old <clears throat> designs of the old cars. And there's a, a channel that I watch. Um, his name escapes me right now. It's uh, run by Robert Llewellyn. Um, yeah, Crichton of Crichton. Red Dwarf. Yeah, yeah. Um, fully charged. Fully charged. It's all about electric vehicles. It's un unbelievable. So they get it's all cutting edge stuff, and a lot of the shows, uh, some of the shows, are about that, dropping in electric engines yeah, yeah. into old and yeah. they're, they're form fitting. Yeah, you haven't missed awesome. anything. We're talking crap. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Paper Mario asked. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. We were waiting for you, and now we can continue. Now <laughs> we can start. Now the Paper Mario's here. Um, I do have a poll question here, um, so I'm going to put it on the screen. There we go. I, I thought that noise was <laughs> something like, else. Yeah, yeah. I was like, where's that sound effect coming from? <laughs> it's my new sound effect board. Uh, when did you rediscover your love for the Atari 2600? Um, the options are, one, I still have my Atari from the 70s, 80s. Two, I bought a VCS in the 90s. Three, I bought a VCS in the aughts. Um, oh, the further and further we get from the aughts, the happier I will be. We won't have to, to use... Reference it. To say aughts, which is not widely used. and <laughs> Zero people use it. They Spence, say 2000s. It was, so, it was so unsatisfying for like a, like almost two decades of having like no good way to refer to the first decade of the 21st century. Yeah. Yeah. And I know it's like, awkward. My it's brain always was like, it's the aughts. And then nobody says it. And then I was like, no one will know what I'm talking about. So don't say that word. People say the 2000s mm -hmm. and they still don't like that term. Either. Yeah, nobody likes it. It's terrible. It's no good term. It's the worst decade <laughs> of the, the century. It just is. But nobody says the teens. But Have you ever said, how did anybody thing. say the teens? What did people say 2010s? when it was 1900 to 1910? What did they say then? 1909, whatever. I don't know. That's a good question. The aughts? Sounds like an old timey word. And you know, honestly, this last decade is not much better. <laughs> no. It's, in fact, it's just as bad. The tens, oh, I can't wait the till teens. the twenties. We can start like using like. A... We'll see about the twenties. But I think people. No, will, it's will called use... the twenties. It's going to be called the. There's no question. What I mean, unless Nobody someone comes up with some, unless someone comes up with a, something better. Yeah. If someone comes up with a better, I'm all for it. But at least we have the twenties as a fallback. Yeah, I'm comfortable saying the twenties. That's right. I think most people would be. Nobody says the tens or the teens. What happened in they the last twenties? It was like the flying. 20, <laughs> the flying what, what was it called? It was something. The twenties. Everybody was like the the, the, the fighting twenties. No, it was like everybody was like partying and they were not swinging twenties. Something the, like that. Roaring. The roaring twenties. Yeah, oh. <laughs> no, Jackson needs to throttle back in the coffee today. No. No. This is his his normal level. <laughs> um, uh, bought a VCS in this decade is option four. Option five, rediscovered it through emulation. Option six? No, that's five. And number six, Atari 2600. What is that? Where am I? <laughs> what am I watching? Uh, what, what am I doing? Um, so lots of different answers. This is a good poll. Usually the polls are like three, 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 Did three, you have three. this one? Emulation? You, that was the last yeah, one. Emulation okay, yeah, was yeah, the yeah. second okay, to last yeah, one. Yeah. yeah. And I got mine, I, I never had one in the 80s or 70s, so, uh, but I played other people. So I'm going to be, bought it in the um, 90s, because I bought mine again, probably in 90, or bought mine for the first time, 94, 94, yeah. So like three years after it was discontinued, because it went to 91, if you can believe that. 77 to 91, one of the longest in production 
home console ever. Oh, that's a long so time. that's like 14 years. Unbelievable. Um, Paper Mario. I've never played. I've I've never any Atari game on actual hardware. I discovered the Atari 2600 in 2018 through emulation. I love Atari because the games have a charm that no other media can achieve. That's really interesting. And he's gonna he's gonna be the outlier, definitely. That they never really played any Atari before. But it that aesthetic is kind of back where pixel games are kind of cool because of phones. And there's a lot of pixel games being made for home consoles. Actually, like what's consoles weird about Atari games is that they... It, it's almost like the homebrew games are the ones that made them into pixel games. In my head, Atari games aren't even really pixel games because the graphics mm. were so often not even. They didn't even try. They're not even pixels. They didn't even <laughs> try in a lot of cases. Like, what is there's, that? What is the one with the keys and the dragons? The dragon adventure. Thing? Adventure. I mean, where it's, it's pretty like, there's chunky. There's not even any. There's not even any like attempt at graphics for a lot of the stuff. It's most of the stuff. Is, you're a square. It's pre-pixels. It's pre-pixel characters it's, almost. It's like, an early it's, one. Yeah, it's an early one. I mean, the dragon doesn't really look like a dragon yeah, everybody yeah, calls yeah. it a duck yeah and the pixels very... were so big that everything i don't refer to them as pixels because they're not <laughs> <laughs> the chunky chunky yeah things, it's yeah. like a, I... a pixel conglomeration like, <laughs> pixels are, are a pixel pixels. a pixel is like one dot one dot not a bunch of dots yeah i yeah. think on adventure the smallest thing is like four dots well, everything's your double. character like a square it's really small anyways uh, i think he's a two by two. Oh, okay. around that uh, the adventure here was a big pixel. Yep. And there's even <laughs> games now uh, that are literally just pixels. There's one up, one that I bought for the PS4 that your two guys that you control, one is a taller rectangle and one is a shorter rectangle and you hop on each other. <laughs> and the play field is just chunky, but it's so much fun. Um, I want to actually remake that for the 2600. A demake. It's not even a demake. It's just a porting almost. There's no demaking needed. I mean, demake it, means uh, making a, a lesser looking version. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Because somebody made Halo 2600, which obviously it's impossible to make the yeah. And, and there was um, so it's Doom. all yeah. Did they make it? like remember we played the one in the where all the guns dropping and like oh no that was uh, not Doom but it was uh, Quake not Quake. Um, <laughs> crap. Some other, some other game, but yeah, it was flat. Fragfest was yeah. yeah Fragfest twenty nineteen. <laughs> Somebody will say it. Um, yeah, that one got a lot of views. Okay. And this little cat wants a lot of views too. Bye bye. Bye bye. He's trouble. He knows he gets attention, which he did again, but it's bad attention. And he loves bad attention too. Uh, the name will come to me eventually. But yeah, they made it 2D, um, and you're a little guy, you wander around, you pick up the weapons, but it it worked really well. And Halo Castle 20... Wolfenstein? Nope. <laughs> it's, an, it's a more modern game than that. Um, come on, crowd, help us out. Oh, well. Uh, I like Shovel Knight, but it is an authentic. Yeah, I have the of... Shovel Knight soundtrack, and I really like it, but I've never played Shovel Knight. <laughs> Shovel Knight's really good if you love platformers. It's huh? so good. Yeah. And I love platformers, so I have it like on two yeah. different. I have it like for the DS and PS4, I think. Really, really good. Um, but yeah, there's there's D makes, there's ports. Ports are going to be like, yeah, it's going to be as close Replicate. as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As much as I can. And then D makes are, yeah, are are like Halo 2600. What's it called when you? Uh, what's the opposite of a D make? <laughs> An up up make uh and make. they do that too yeah. they take old games and they've you know enhanced the graphics but it's the same it's usually, game oh okay that's, that's like cool. all all the same enemies same oh you know what they did that with uh, star control too right yeah and, and it's been done that's been done quite a bit actually yeah. because people love these old games yeah. and they can add more to it um okay so a mail a news and a feedback and i think we have all three <laughs> uh champ games on upcoming homebrew um because there are some champ two champ games coming out very very soon i mean i already have them because they, they released them at portland retro gaming expo uh wizard of war and galagon are sitting on the shelf the shelf up there but they're coming to the atari age store any second yeah grab that one and grab that one 
might as well use visual uh, aids. So these are the champ games coming out. No, I'm doing it there wrong. There you go. Oh, block your face. Oh, no. I'm, there you go. There, there you go. We go. Down a bit on the Wizard of War. No, no. There. Perfect. <laughs> oh, definitely a beat-em-up can work. They did uh, Double Dragon, actually, was done on uh, the Atari 2600. And it was done by... Uh, his name is escaping me right now. Uh, Dan Kitchen, who's a big friend of the show. And we've interviewed him. There you go. Dan Kitchen. Oh, Paper Mario just beat me to it. Almost. Um, Thomas was alone. Yes. And actually finished that game on uh, PS4. It was so good. It was so unbelievable. And I think it, it could be ported to the 2600 uh, quite easily in a certain way because you you control both the characters and then you can switch between them and one helps the other because one can't quite reach. and One can jump higher, but one is taller. So you have to overcome certain obstacles. Super amazing and fun. Um, but anyway, those are being released very, very shortly into the Atari Age store. But it came up, uh, um, I think, oh, I can't remember. Anyway, it was posted in the Atari Age forum, all the games that are upcoming planned releases by Champ Games. And it was quite astounding how many he has talked about. And I put them in order after he posted them. Um, so November, December, Galagon, Wizard of War um, are coming out uh, in the Atari Age store. And he also said Av Avalanche is code complete, um, but that's not coming out yet. And Avalanche is going to be released in the spring of 2020, most likely, pending a label contest. Uh, summer 2020, Zookeeper will be coming out. It's about 90% done right now. Late 2020, Gorf Arcade, that's why, because they um, announced Gorf um, a couple days ago. And a lot of people apparently really, really love that game, so that's going to be a big hit. It's like a five-stage space game, and each stage has a very different type of gameplay, so it has a lot of variation. And the home ports of them was always were always missing one level, because that level is... Galaxian, which was licensed to a different company, and they couldn't get the license properly for the home ports of it, so they always skipped that level. So this will include that third level. Hmm. Um, 2021, Lunar Lander is coming out. Uh, he says, 100% uh, playable, but we plan on adding a few bells and whistles before the release. Um, then there's, on hold, Elevator Action, which is about 30% done. But it requires bus technology, um, but there's some issues with bus technology with the Atari 2600 Junior and the Atari 7800 that it doesn't work quite the same um, properly. So they have mm. to overcome those, those issues somehow uh, through software because it can't change the hardware. Um, or they could release it saying there's incompatibilities, but Atari Age doesn't want to do that for obvious reasons. Yeah, yeah because a lot of people have 7800s and 20, uh, 2600 juniors. So they have to find some tweak that works on all the systems, but and through can software. That be, can that be... Um, it's like a time Can you issue. have both? Can you have that's, separate... That's a possibility, maybe, that they could do... Like, is that like a ton more effort to do that? or It might be just a, a branching code. It's like, oh, if you have this... Or it could be a selectable menu option. Or like, can you have like all like three separate ones in which, yeah. which it just like knows it, which one it is to do it? That's possible. Or a separate cart release, but I don't think you'd need to do that. It would just be extra code. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, if you have a, a 2600 Junior or a 7800, go here and execute it this way yeah. instead of this way. Um, maybe it can be auto-sensing, knowing. And there was discussion of that too. I think you could do something and 2600 Juniors do it in a different way and it can sense it that way yeah um because they can sense um they've set up code to sense if you have an atari box if you have a genesis two button controller right so right. that's a possibility as well uh does cdfj compensate for the bus stuffing no as far as i know it does not john was able to build off of some of the galagon for gorf so that sped up initial development yes uh cdfj is oh yes yeah, spicewares in here he can talk all about that because he's uh, right now doing a educational series on CDFJ programming, 
which is excellent. So uh, other people can uh, program with that. CDFJ is a more updated version of DC, PP, DPC+. Plus. Bus stuffing is a different technique, so they're very separate things. Uh, CDFJ doesn't quite get us there. Yeah, there we go. Well, they haven't corrected me, so I'm not talking out my ass all the stuff I just said. <laughs> if you were, good. you're doing an excellent job of ventriloquism from your butt. That's right. Wah, wah, wah. It, your mouth is <laughs> just matching perfectly with where it's coming out. Uh, the next one, unknown release date, Champ Sports Hockey. Uh, he says it's about 5% complete. Uh, just a proof of concept with the scrolling rink. We haven't seen the scrolling rink. We've only seen screenshots so far. Um, a possible which I've never heard him mention this before, Archon. And you remember that game for the uh, Commodore 64? It's a Is chess, it chess type, one. I was going to say, yeah, battle, like a game. battle chess type thing. Yeah, Yeah, except battle chess was actual chess. Um, Archon, how that is, yeah. if you have two characters that go on, like you take the other person, it actually opens up to an actual joystick battle. Yeah. But the strong, stronger character has almost a... 100% chance of winning if he's really but strong. But the stronger player still has has yeah. a great ability to humiliate the weaker player. Yes. <laughs> it's like tap. Dead. I remember playing with Brad. Yeah. And I was like, it didn't matter which one he had and which one I had. It was like, <laughs> he always I was just going to die. Yeah. <laughs> if you're good, you can defeat everyone with like your little pawn yeah, character. Yeah. Oh, especially if they're bad. It's more that I sucked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, D-Train says there's a picture of Archon on the Champs Games Facebook page. I totally missed that because that's a big deal. I loved Archon. Um, yeah, it's totally doable on this on the 2600. You have the board, which you just have the play field, alternate, alternate color mm -hmm. for all the, the spaces. And the rest is the characters, and uh, I think it's just eight wide, which is. And you only have one character fighting for each person at a time, yeah, so that's you it. don't. Yeah. And so. you have a missile. It's like the basics. You're going back to combat for the twenty six hundred. How about mule? Oh, there's been a lot of. Uh, a lot as long of... as you fixed it so that the one joystick didn't always win all the auctions <laughs> because its button was checked first. Yes. Because at the end, happened. when the thing was full, it mattered most at the end when the thing was full because otherwise it was a race to hit it. Yeah. But when, if you needed when there food, was only one left, who yeah. had, or it was the first one in the row, you just hold yeah. the button down. Because yeah. there was priority given, yeah. not randomness, because everybody, it's like everybody's starving, there's food in the store. Everybody pressed up to go and buy the food, and it was always one specific and, person and, and that overruled everyone. And when you were everyone. picking the plots of land, if yes. there was one, if it was the first one, you just hold the button down. Yep, and you get it. And you get it because you have the joystick. Yeah. So it has to be random. It has to go who's pressing the joystick button, and then do a randomness, or some some other decision making. Yeah. But yes, mule would be oh my god, amazing. But that one's quite advanced. Um, but with the four port joystick uh, adapter coming out, the Quadtari, we're primed for Mule. It can happen. Make it happen. Uh, making the game, not producing it. Da, da, da. I'm starting on the Champ Hockey Sprites this weekend. Ooh, excellent. Uh, that's Nathan Strum said that. Um, somebody do a Mule. That's where I got it. Pictures of Archon. Oh, that's where it got. To. John said it was just a proof of concept of the kernel. That's a, that's a lot of the work. If you can get the screen looking the way you want it, that's and doing all the proper kernels, top down or from the side. Oh, it's kind of a side thing. Oh, champ hockey. Oh, that's a good question. I would say it's from the side, probably the champ hockey from the screenshots. Anyway, uh, let's continue on. That's very cool. Yeah, people have been talking about Mule in the uh, Atari Age forums. But nothing solid yet. Uh, next one, unknown ripoff. Uh, Forty percent done. Ripoff is a game from the arcade. It was also done on the Vectrex. Um, yeah, that one's accessible. Here's a ripoff from the Vectrex. Space space fighting game. Oh, that's totally out of focus. Put it over Darcy's face. <laughs> there we go. Rip off from the back tracks. So, a space fighting game. Um, that one shouldn't be too hard ish. Because there's lots of really complex space games that have been made. Um, 
Ah, too many things up here. Ah, so that says unknown, 40% done, no official release planned. Um, possible Moon Cresta that was started in 2007. No plans have yet to complete it. I don't know anything about Moon Cresta. Uh, unknown Cosmic Avenger was started in 2015, which turned into Scramble, although we may complete it someday. So he's got a base going for Cosmic Avenger. I haven't played that. I know I have it for Coleco, I believe. So there is a ton of upcoming possible releases well into the 2020s for Champ Games. So a lot to look forward to. Somebody needs to do uh, a Paradroid homebrew. Uh, here's a tutorial writing a 2K game. Oh, that's good. Uh, also rip off 7800 homebrew. Uh. Okay, so I've got an update to my Atari 2600 RGB repair, which is sitting there. Um, so I contacted uh, Tim, who made, who developed the RGB uh, board, and he said, I can sell you a replacement switching regulator, mm -hmm. which was the thing that failed, um, for, it's fine, it's $8 plus 5 shipping to Canada. Um, it's expensive to ship from, from uh, Australia. Uh, and comes here in two, two to six weeks. Well, I'll order it anyway, even if that's not the problem. Uh, let me know if you're happy with that, and you can invoice me. But he said, and I'll need your help and your help, all you people out there. He said, just be aware that it's possible that a low voltage output, I'm getting 2.5 instead mm -hmm. of 5 out of it, from the regulator could indicate that something connected to the output is drawing excessive current. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily that the regulator itself is faulty. Um, so it could be something along the line that's also faulty because we measured um, another 2600 at, powered on with a cartridge mm -hmm. and it outputted 5 volts. So it doesn't drop necessarily when you have something running on it. Um, so if anybody out there has ideas of what that could be um, or if you think that it's most likely the switching regulator that is the problem when well, it's the, measuring low voltage. But we should do just a quick, uh, I would like to do another quick little test on it again with no cartridge in it because I think we tested it with a cartridge just when we measured sure it. Because would... we measured, we we're trying, we we're measuring across the. So we we're measuring the, yeah. the legs of the. Uh, voltage regulator, regulator uh, to ground. I'm just and trying to think where the voltage could be stolen yeah. from. Like that's the source. Yeah, like that's the source. It would have to be further along but I, I, inside it, but would that yeah. affect it? I mean, the he said so, and so therefore, <laughs> yes, yes. But I'm trying yeah. to figure out what it could be. What it could be. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, John uh, has quite the backlog from taking 10 years off from the hobby. Yeah. John has 12 to 13 possible projects. Four or five are imminent. It's crazy. It is crazy. He's been releasing about two a year since he's come back, and they've all been mind-blowingly good. So that's the update for the 2600 repair. I'm going to order that part regardless. Um, Nathan Strom, I'd suggest transplanting all the chips from your RGB 2600 with another one that works one at a time to make sure all the chips are good. You'd want to socket everything. Yeah. Mm. That's that's why that's why considering just installing the power regulator first. Yeah. Is being considered because like it's cheap. It's why a, not? It's it's easy. We'd have to buy tools to make desoldering the chips. Oh, sounds like um, a nightmare. Because, like, I have a solder sucker. Yeah. But, you know, like, we don't have, like... Maybe it's not that expensive to buy. I don't know. But, what, like, the ones, really with good the ones with the vacuum on it seems... At, I just would imagine like they'd Like, the be heat expensive. and the vacuum. Yeah, yeah. All in one. Yeah, yeah. those look awesome. <laughs> yeah, it looks like magic to me. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's the update for that, and and I got feedback from the last uh, episode where we played Galaxian Arcade, a whole bunch of ports. Uh, Kevin uh, Moss three, Kevin M O S, um, M O S. But oh, once, sure. sorry, I'm still on the socketing thing. <laughs> yes. Once you socket it, though, it's socketed forever, and then in okay. the future, if you have a problem, 
easy. You because in the future, if you had a problem and it was one of those chips, it would be worth your while mm. to replace the chip because yeah. you already have the RGB and all that stuff. Set oh up. yeah. And so unlike oh, yeah. I'm unlike keep that another going position where you might be better off just like having another Atari that does work. Right. Anyways. Yeah. No, socketing is, is a it's, good idea. And I, I want to try and keep this running forever um, because it was not, it's, it does take a little effort to get that RGB in there. Uh, would it be possible somehow uh, do FMV on an Atari 2600? Somebody actually did it. Uh, the uh, Apple, Apple demo. What is it? Something Apple. Deadly Apple, Poison Apple. Anyway, they did it. It's like a 512 kilobyte file that doesn't run on anything except the emulator, I think. It's unbelievable. It's music and full motion video. Uh, that's what FFP is. Um, anyway, let's go on. Uh, so I got feedback from Kevin uh, Moss. He said, I wish I'd known you were going to play Galaxian Arcade on your stream. I would have given some info. I just saw it on YouTube. I wanted to fill in some few, a few gaps. I was really rushed last episode because I had a lot to do. So I wasn't able to reach out to the developers last time. Um, so Bad Apple, that's what it is. Bad Apple. Yes. Search for Bad Apple 2600. Uh, it'll blow you away. Uh, the FMV that's there. It's using just Playfield for, I guess it's um, 40 by probably doubled. So um, uh, 90, 92. Is that what's 192 divided by 2? It's uh, 6, 96? Yeah. 96 by 40 resolution graphics using the play field. It's really incredible. There we go. Thank you, Spiceware, for linking that. Um, so uh, the hack has no relation to at all to the one sold in the Atari store, which I erroneously said it was the one in the Atari store. Um, I started this in 2010, editing the original Galaxian because I wanted a much, much closer version to the arcade. I asked New Quiche, Kurt Howe, uh, if he could help me adding a couple features, he went above and beyond with the arcade boot up screen, which is very cool. The high score table, wide shot difficulty option, hidden bonus level, and a pause feature and more. So Nuki added a uh, startup animation, arcade like score table, multiple colors per enemy, uh, flagship sprite, playership multicolor, sound when starting the game, heightened pitch of enemy diving sound, added the difficulty flip switch, uh, A for normal shots, B for wide shots, added a pause, the black and white switch. Uh, added, oh, actually just hides the player ship, so you just can't be shot. So it kind of pauses the action. Added the hidden bonus level and some more. And then Kevin MOS added new player ship sprite, changed the enemy colors and sprites, made new enemy and player explosion animations, changed the other colors and sprites, more reflect the arcade, and removed the border. Um, so there's actually two versions of Galaxian Arcade for you to enjoy out there. FMV with color. Sure, of course, it'd be possible with a fast enough um, like CDFJ or bus. So you can change because all you're doing is uh, doing the play field. So you don't have to worry about the player characters, the ball, the missiles. So, yeah, you should be able to do full chunky color <laughs> every four uh, things along. But I think most of them are in black and white anyway. Um, so, we're going to get to the first game, finally! Yay, 38 minutes in! Woo! Yay. New record! <laughs> <laughs> of getting to it fast? Okay. So you haven't played this before, I don't think. <gasps> but maybe. It's Robot City. It is by Thomas Yench. It is amazing and fun and simple 4K game. Uh, so let's load that up over here. Bot City. And this is from the 26th, three days ago. He said he was working on a new release uh, that's coming out very, very shortly, but he didn't get it done before the show. PAL 60. Huh. Yeah. I don't know much about PAL 60, but obviously it's a much easier conversion for doing PAL games. So a lot of people program PAL 60, 60 frames a second. Mm -hmm. But apparently it's very compatible and a lot of people are able to use it in Europe um, for these games, for their <laughs> Atari. So I need to look into that. Uh, so let's switch over. Robot City. Let's just restart that so you can everybody can see the incoming animation. Oh, 
restart. There we go. Flip. So there's uh, five different levels for this. Which button is the button? Uh, it is the green button, I believe. And so three is kind of the default level. Okay, I'm just going to turn down the volume for a bit. You're going to pause. Okay, go. You can only shoot them from behind. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I, no, no, I I'll remember playing you. this. Oh, you do? Okay, perfect. We played it here, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we did a yeah, long time ago in 2018. And oh, then and they we shoot did it at you recently even in when they can't see you. Yes, they just they just go for it. Um, so this yeah. has been in progress since 2002. This is one of the longest, probably the longest game ever in development. Uh, it's probably going to hold the So record. I can't run into their no previous shields. They are deadly. I the big change since the last time we played this is you can now shoot through the downed players before they block. So I'm going to go through all the updates. It's a 4K game, oh, which is I'm amazing. Dead. This is incredibly fun. And, and they turn towards you? Uh, yes. That is their... Mostly they turn towards you, so you can kind of direct them. Nope. And the movement is in chunks. Like if you press, just click to the left or click to the right, it moves in like chunks. It's not a smooth move. So you do have to be careful when approaching a tank to uh, to not keep holding it. Uh, other games by Thomas Yench. Uh, Star Castle Arcade, Toy Shop Trouble, Boulder Dash, Swoops, Minigame Collection, Jam, Starfire, The Stacks, a ton of trackball hacks, Ram Pong, Robot City, and Three Dots. This version is available in the Atari Age Forum. The last day, last time we played it was November 13th, 2019. Um, I'm going to read you the original description from 2002. I like this uh, joystick so much better than uh, any other joystick really? I've ever used. <laughs> wow. I mean, it is a very, very, very good joystick. These are not inexpensive joysticks. These are very expensive. So um, good. They're very precise. Very, very precise, which some games, I don't like it for. I've gotten a, very, very used to it now. Oh, God! Ah, we're oh, God! Oh, you almost got escaped from that guy. What sound effect does that remind me of? Like a million... Like a million arcade. arcade games, yeah. But something specifically, like somebody laughing. I, I remember it matching up with somebody laughing on the screen. Oh! They can shoot themselves. But does the, do I get the benefit? You got 30 points. Okay. I think you do get the benefit. So, you can get that guy to shoot that guy. Oh, oh I just missed him. <laughs> so that is a tactic. It does have auto-fire, so what I suggest when you come around a corner is to hold down the button. Oh, well, no, I no, still no. got him before I died. That's slightly better. True. Normally, He's I just dead. die. He is still dead. <laughs> so the description from... The sound does not match the screen. Yes, I am very sorry about that. Well, how come? Uh, because of various delays in syncing, and I just keep forgetting until like an hour before the show, and that's not enough time to do the syncing. Um, so you're just going to have to deal with the one-second delay, half-second weirdness. Sorry. I liked real hardware where the sound matched the video. Yeah, I know. Because I have all these things, all these audio video components. Oh that boy, was, they're all coming for you there. That was, that was, that was a bad scene. That was a bad, bad scene. Nobody liked that. Because we've got the microphone here, the video there, the video of the game, the sound of the game, um, the webcam, we don't have the sound for it, because there's no point in having the webcam sound. It sounds terrible. Uh, oh. And the thing that's off is the emulator from the stream. And it's like a half second off. So I do apologize. I, it's very interesting. I didn't know this, and I don't know why he does this. It's probably to get a very specific color. Oh, you're causing trouble for yourself there. Oh, you did it! Get him, shoot him! Nice! 
That was a very good tactical move to go there because I'm not sure how they determine where to change. It's based on the longest. Thomas Jens can answer this where how do they decide whether to go like if you are at a 45 degree angle or more would they turn more for the longest distance for you or the shortest distance or is it random i mean it has to be random when you're perfectly 45 to them oh I just, you actually i was screwed yourself. anyways yeah you were <laughs> i'm all permanently screwed now oh no can they shoot through those things yes and i can you can as well. So you're okay. not 100% screwed until I'm, your time I'm, runs I'm out. I'm less screwed than normal because I have a permanent hiding space because they can't drive through those things. No, they can't. And on uh, level 3, they also can't revive their friends. On oh. other levels, they can revive their friends. Oh. Nobody likes that. <laughs> no, it's very hard. Uh, so this is from 2002. Thomas Yance, author of Thrust for the Atari 2600, has started work on a new 2600 game called Robot City. Robot City is an unk unreleased prototype on the Odyssey 2, so it never actually came out the original. And uh, Thomas has thus far managed to squeeze it into 2K on the 2600. He's now expanded it to 4K. So when he bumps and turns around, you can get him. Go down now. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, you're right. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. So that's the way you can do it. You can yep. lead them up, and they bump and turn around. I had a different plan. So let's take a look at level one. I ordered the four direction by distance, oh, okay, and then choose the shortest randomly with the most probability. Okay, I see. So let's play level one. No, I have to read out a bunch of stuff. Or or you can if you want. So level one is easier? Oh, level oh. one, they're slower. And there's only two. And there's only two. And they can't revive. Uh, the premise of the game is simple. You're a helicopter in a maze filled with tanks trying to kill you. Of course, you must kill them first with your gun. But the tanks have shield, and you can, can only be disabled when hit in the rear when they're unprotected. Uh, development is continuing rapidly at that point. And then the latest version, point two one, has several new features. Built-in maze generator. <gasps> I guess this... Yeah, this... Uh, is this... Oh, Thomas, I never even thought about this. I always assumed that the mazes were... Uh, set so are all all of the mazes randomly generated or are there some set ones plus randomly generated ones because i swear i've seen ones repeat uh thrust says so the shortest has the 60 oh i see the shortest has 65 probably 65 percent probability in game one up to 95 percent 93 percent in game five Yes, random generated mazes. Wow, so every single maze is totally, totally, completely generated randomly. That's really, really cool. Um, it says built in maze, maze generator, wall density can be changed with the left difficulty. What? what? Ah! Oh. Maybe before you start the game. I'll have to try that. I'll set it to A and then see what happens next time. Improved fuel display, hitting tanks from the back is more tolerant, larger tank missiles, some minor bug fixes. Those are old things. So since we played it last show, here's all the changes. Tank AI now depends on the game selected, less targeted at player in lower games. And that's what you're just talking about in the percentages. Speed increases with each cleared sector. So there's a, it's the game speeds up as it goes along. Uh, a second player can control the tanks and overrule their AI. So I will, uh, this might be fun, not sure. Oh, we must have played, no, we played it after this. Yeah, we played it after this. Yeah, some fixes. Okay, uh, November 18th, this is the release candidate one. It's the next changes. Sorry, what were you trying to do with the difficulty? Uh, in the original write-up from 2002 that was posted on Atari Age, it says, um, Wall density can be changed with the left difficulty. So the walls are thinner? I mean, vertically they can't be thinner because they have to be four pixels across. Uh, because they're done with the play field, right? Yeah, done with the play field. Oh, just missed. Twice. I oh. recommend holding down the button as you turn the corner. Ah. Because then you have the highest chance of hitting. Oh, that got removed. Okay. 
So there is no wall density anymore. Strike that. So uh, RC1, this is after we played, changes more sounds added. Scores depend uh, on game played. So you get higher scores on the harder difficulties, I'm guessing. High scores, no high score if second player controlled the tank. So it doesn't count. Wall density is now random with more extreme mazes in higher levels. Oh, wall density, as in more walls. There you go. As opposed to less walls, more open or harder mazes. Interesting. Uh, the cart version will support the save key as well, so you can keep your high scores. Very cool. Run out of time? Just in time. I didn't even know there was a time limit. <laughs> it's it's uh, fuel uh, for your helicopter. That's what it's uh, set as. Uh, tanks which cannot be revived show as shields only. So they only showed the circle. Before they showed as, I think, blinking when they were disabled. Uh, now they're just empty, which is a way better indicator, I think. Uh, there's a now PAL-60 version for all the European people. Uh, uh, there's been polishing, optimization, and bug fixes. Uh, RC2, which was uh, released on November 24th. Tanks turn at half speed now. No. Uh, there's a pause key, right difficulty A. I'm going to actually set that back to left difficulty, just in case. Um, so let's try that out. There we go. You froze it. Yep, complete pause. Very nice. Uh, missing game over tune in PAL-60 mode enabled. Fixed a bug which affected tank missiles and real hardware. And filed a bug for Stella. Oh, finding bugs, nice. Um, uh, RC3 uh, changed the initial game speeds for variations. For all variations but three. One and two are faster now. Four and five are slower. Faster difficulty ramp up, ramp up from city to city. 40% faster. Please let me know if that's too much now. Bonus life every two cities cleared. So you can see the number of lives in the bottom right-hand corner. Same color as your helicopter. Uh, and then, after RC3, Thomas found out that the original Odyssey 2 game allowed you to shoot through the downed tanks. Plus, Hizzy pointed out in the Atari Age forums that sometimes you can shoot through the downed tanks anyway. Because um, Thomas is using uh, hardware um, hardware collisions uh, detection, which if you can get away with it, why not use that? Oh. <laughs> um, so the little things going around the tanks, if you shoot at the exact right moment on earlier builds that blocked it before, you could actually get a shot through the oh, I'm running out of time uh, fuel. Uh oh. Uh, this is, yes, Paper Mario, this is based on an, uh, an unreleased Odyssey 2 game, so it never came out, so it was just a prototype. So I'm really happy that it was found out and now we get to benefit of, from Thomas Yen's uh, porting this amazingly fun, um, simple but fun, like the concept is so, so basic, but just the variation that you can have in this with the different mazes and the different speeds of the tanks and the being able to um, revive the enemy tanks. Oh, death to you. Level seven. Ah. Anyway, okay. So uh, Thomas found out that you get, uh, that the original actually shot through the tanks, and you could shoot through them anyway sometimes. So he released a new one uh, three days ago in RC4 where you just you shoot through them. And that's what I want to check out. We'll go to the higher levels in a bit, where it'll come more into play, where you have to be a little bit more tactical because there's four tanks coming after you. So this update, what's in this? In November uh, 26th, helicopter shots go through kill tanks. Uh, new helicopter graphics, which look pretty good. I would maybe suggest one more dot at the front of the landing gear. What do you think on the helicopter? Just looks a little uneven, where it's a little short on one end. Because I did some experiments with. Um, um, it's it has the tail on the correct side, anyways. Uh -oh. Yep. Yep. Uh oh, oh, you did it. 
And no! uh, and also you can have a rotor on the back end by uh, alternating it on the top and bottom. What do you think of that? That like the tail rotor? If there's space for it. Yeah, because he's got he's got a two frame animation of the uh, the rotor on the top, and I think you could put a two frame animation of the rotor on the back of the helicopter too. Um, and I tried some uh, pixel graphics, and I extended the landing, uh, landing, whatever they are, landing feet, one more pixel up front, and I thought it looked a little bit better. Thrust, I can only do one, two, or four, one, two, four, or eight pixel. Oh, is that done with the ball? Oh, it is. Oh, because you were... I thought it wasn't done with the ball, and you were asking people if it could be done with the ball, but it is, so, yeah. So, yeah, no, he wouldn't be able to do it. My turn. My turn. So, never mind. That is pretty damn good for ball graphics. So, let's go to level... Uh, level 5, which is hard as hell, and I'm going to die. This guy can be soldering iron, but I don't believe it. <laughs> says it does the thing, but... Oh, look! Two disabled! Oh, they shot each other. Oh, he's gonna revive them. No! Oh, and the other one revived the other one. Run, oh run, 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 run. Okay, everybody, shoot each other. So you can shoot through only destabilized, or... Yes. Okay. Yeah. Only... Otherwise, there's no point in having shields. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, you go there. I shoot you. Oh, my God. Okay. You get revived by your friend in about two seconds. There you go, you're revived again. And then I get this guy, maybe. Oh, oh! Got trapped. And you're revived again. Oh my god. I find level five so bloody hard. So hard. Go play level four after this. <laughs> Level 4 I can manage. Level 5 is just... Brutal. Oh, and they're fast, too. But not yeah, too they're... fast. Like, they're manageable. He did have them a little bit faster in the last build. They were too fast. Or two builds ago. They're like speedy, speedy. It looked like the game was kind of sped up. Oh, God. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. I'm going to play level 4. Level 5 is, like, for super experts, but I'm glad it's there. It needs to be there. And I, he made, uh, after some suggestions in the forums, he made level 1 and 2 the same speed, and then 3, a little bit faster, and then... Oh, I just missed them. Oh, they can be revived in this too. Damn it. What was the difference here then? Between four and four and five, I thought five was the only one you could revive. Oh my god! Revived again. Okay, now I shoot you. Oh, I just blocked him off. And I shoot you, and now I have a chance. I have a chance. I have a chance. Whew. They don't seem like outrageously. Expensive. Give Darcy a joystick too. Yeah. What? Uh, the next game we'll give Darcy a joystick. The, the... How much are they? Uh, well, it, it varies. I, I didn't look Around. at the details of all of them, but like ten dollars or a hundred dollars. Oh, more than a hundred dollars. Oh but, God! But no. we're but if like I'm dead. If you're buying it for the one thing, then no, that's no. a lot of money to spend. But like, oh God! Oh, but they won't kill each other now. Uh, they do. They do. How come someone second. didn't die there then? He he did actually. No, he, he was flashing just oh, for a second. Okay. This maze is not good. Long, long corridors are yeah, very hard. On this maze, for sure. Yeah. And this is like almost exclusively long corridors. Okay. So they yep. can be revived, I see. Yep. But if you get them all kind of in... Oh, they're not going this way. He's going by himself. There we go. No, no, no. Up here. Up here, up here. Come up here. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Now, if I can draw this guy up here... 
No, 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 Corners. I still get you. <laughs> <laughs> Two, three, and four have the same speed. Oh, okay, okay. That's better. Because they all have different variations. Like two to three has more tanks. Two to four has more tanks. Oh, he revived himself. Shoot him again. Shoot him again. <laughs> Damn it. Got another life, which is good. Shoot this guy. Damn it! No! I meant to go to the right. <laughs> I didn't press that direction. It's a lot easier with these short runs. Nice. Yeah, yeah, for sure. See that you can do that? Yeah. But he's gonna revive his friend. Get this guy first. No. Yes. So this is doable, but the next... And what level is this for? Four. It's hard, but doable. I think this is the level I would want to play mostly, because it's a good challenge. Oh, did someone die? Okay, um, now I'm going to hand you the second controller. And this controls the tanks. So can we get a picture of these two controllers side by side? <laughs> <laughs> My controller? In Anyways, it's fair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. The you just way, want to win even more. The way this works... Hey, stop pressing things. The way this works <laughs> is that you control all the tanks at once. Oh. So if you press up, they'll, they'll all, all try go and go up. up. Ah. If you press nothing, the AI takes over for all a right. bit until you press it again. So that's, that's how it works. It's really, really, really cool. Yeah, that is cool. If I ever make a homebrew game, it must have multiple difficulties. Definitely. All the old games for Atari have like, all the like original ones have like 99 levels of difficulty where it, it all changes little tiny variations. each other or something. There you go. Shoot, shoot. Ah, too slow. Oh, damn it. Oh, I'm dead. Oh, I'm not dead. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> I I accept some credit for that. Yeah? You'll mm -hmm. take some? Okay. Okay, shoot, shoot, shoot each other. Damn it. <laughs> oh, it's hard to be on the same plane as every, all the other tanks. Corridors are deadly. I would like to make a randomly generated obstacle course kind of game. Oh, that's that's kind of cool. I don't, I don't think I can think of another one kind of like that. Depends on what kind of obstacle course. It's like an en endless runner. There's been some endless runners made. Uh, if it's on a, a river, there's been kind of that kind of stuff made. Oh, one down. It's definitely, uh, I would say, increased in difficulty that you're now that you're playing, because <laughs> I haven't finished one level. Ah, uh, 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 uh. damn it. Uh. Okay, I'll put them. Okay, shoot him! Shoot him! Shoot him! Yes. Okay, I have to draw that guy up. Could have revived your I did. I told him to go down. Ah. Oh yeah, I could have tried to revive him. Go down. Yeah, yeah. Oh god. Okay. How am I gonna do this? You're gonna revive him. 
No, 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 no! Damn it. <laughs> okay. You suffer the pain. <laughs> you want to play in a lower level or this one? Let's play this one. Okay. It doesn't matter if you're con I mean, it does matter if you're controlling it, but let's do this one anyway. Okay. Death is coming. <laughs> Kind of have to time your movements with the where the tanks are opening, where the openings are for the tanks. So it's kind of interesting. How to time it. Oops! Oh, got too close. But you have two now. Doing better than I did. Oh, damn it! I assumed he was going to do the other, other direction. Now. <laughs> okay, guy. I need more tanks on the field. Let's go revive. Let's go revive some tanks. Oh, no! Damn it! You have to keep holding the direction. Otherwise, they get they get crazy and start doing their own thing. No! Victory! Victory! I don't know what it is. I don't know why it is when we play PvP that somehow <laughs> I have a, a uh, slightly higher advantage than normal. Oh, just doing terrible. Okay, go up. Come on, guys. Get it together, tanks. Oops. I died. You I died. definitely did. Can you imagine if I was able to aim how many more times I would have killed stuff? <laughs> <laughs> I'm always shooting in the wrong direction. Okay, oh, okay. try again. One more. I did terrible. So what you're saying is I won, and so <laughs> I have to play again because I won? It's your punishment. My punishment is... is being defeated properly. <laughs> oh, it's so hard to do all the, move all the tanks at once. Ah, oh, that's not what I wanted. No. There we go. No. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, turn around. Yeah, get him. Get him. Get him. Go revive. Run. Run. Run and revive. No. Oh, see you, Paper Mario. Thanks for hanging out. Tip, never shoot a tank in the top right corner. <laughs> oh, is that, is that because where you start? That's where you start? Mmm. Or... Well, all the tanks start at the t on the bottom. So on this, maybe it's just smart to do that because they're so far away from being revived. That's only you die. Nice. Yes. Still did pretty good. Level two. <laughs> so we're gonna get on to the next game, which is brand new game. Let's take a look at the poll results. Ooh, 23% uh, still have their Atari from the 70s and 80s. That's quite a bit. Uh, number two, bought a VCS in the 90s, 19%. Not many people bought it in the 2000s, only 4%. Uh, bought a VCS this decade. It's like for the first time, rediscovered it, 33%. That is a lot higher than I thought. I thought people would have been like, I still have it, or I bought it in the 90s. And I rediscovered it through emulation, 19%, and nobody is lost. Everybody knows why they're here, <laughs> which, is, which is good. Um, 
so the next game is uh, Hot, Hot, what is it? Street Broad 2600. Yes, I should know the name of the games we're playing. And it <laughs> is by the same guy who did Bass Fishing, came out of nowhere and did Bass Fishing Tournament. And that was surprisingly fun. <laughs> fishing for fish. <laughs> uh, so I've never played, I'd never even heard of the original DOS game for Street Rod. So let me switch over the graphics here. Boom. So I'll let you wander around in this while I... Uh... Oh, sorry. Now, there you go. Um, oh, actually, no. Wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna play the, um, the video from the DOS game, so you guys can see, and I can see what it looked like. Okay. Made by California Dreams in uh, 1989. Street Rod was uh, released in 1989 and takes place in the year 1963. Um, equipped with a garage and a small amount of cash, $750, you buy a used car from the classifieds in a newspaper and embark on a journey to rise to the ranks by winning races against other racers. Using the money you earn through races, you can modify your car, and winning enough races earns you the right to challenge the king for his position. So let's just skip through. It looks like, yeah, buys a car, outfits it with some uh, better motor or upgrades to the car, and then drives it on the road. I guess you have to get gas. We're not going to watch 53 minutes of the video? We could, but <laughs> I think I'm going to skip through most of it. See if we can find the racing part of it. So when I looked at this video, I couldn't really find the racing part. Like, how's this guy earning food, uh, earning money? It's a street rod, not a racing. Uh... <laughs> oh, is this it? Yeah, skip back a bit. There we go. Ah, I uh, see. So you go to the diner, find somebody to race. There, and then a street You go to the diner it. for dinner, and somebody challenges you to race, right. and you're like, okay, forget dinner. You think you're hot? It's time to kick your ass. Let's take it to the street. Sounds like the Xbox PS2 game juiced. Well, this definitely came before that. Or maybe not. X yeah, 89? Yeah, that's well before it. Um, so there you go. It's beating him. Beating him. Oh, did he pass him? Oh, passed him. Now he's rear in his rear mirror. Oh, there's police as well. So you have to evade them. Oh, he got a speeding ticket. <laughs> but he beat him, I think. Or maybe not. So that's the uh, that's the DOS version. Obviously, some very advanced graphics going on there. Uh, well beyond the twenty six hundred, so it's going to have to be a, a definite demake. So let's check it out. Here's the garage. It starts with. Um, so twenty six hundred post on November twenty fifth, uh, four days ago. Uh, I'm going to drop this here for some PR, as I'm not too sure if I'm getting a little too ambitious. I've been slowly tinkering for this for a week now and have a fairly decent idea where I want to head for the, with the project. However, I want it to be uh, fun rather than all flashy graphics and wow factor. The inspiration has come from one of my DOS... Oh, I can turn up the volume. A bit what there. happened? I don't know yet. Uh, obviously with all D makes... Oh, I got oh, Turbo for the me. inspiration has come from one of my favorite DOS games, Street Rod. Obviously, with all the D-makes on the 2600, I have to scale it down. And a game of this caliber, I'm thinking to concentrate on the drag racing aspect rather than the road aqueduct racing. I haven't worked on a title screen or game over screens, etc., etc. Although, with the size of this game, they probably won't be flashy screens like Bass Fishing Tournament. And this is a 32K think, game right now. I think I'm blowing my engine or something. Yeah? I don't you have know, because it's like turning red. If you would add some gaps into the car to structure it a bit for car wins, etc. I'm always getting some suggestions for uh, uh, graphics. 
this looks good. Um, so where it's at now, there's bugs, it's clunky, no real gameplay, along with many features that could be subject to change. There's a high chance the spray paint feature could get axed in favor of ROM space. As of now, it's not implemented anyway. So if you're expecting a fully playable game, it's not at this stage yet. The gameplay so far is a taste of what's to come, uh, and you can actually race. However, the race is about 10 seconds long, like an average quarter mile time. You can buy and change the parts, although they have no effect on the performance at this point. Uh, the plan is they will increase performance, and depending on the opponent you uh, race, I guess, the faster harder they will be. This will all come later as physics gets nailed down. Quick rundown on how to race. It looks like you're figuring it out. Kind of. Yeah, third gear, fourth gear. Yeah, you're getting it. Um, you need to press the fire button as the accelerator. This will rev the engine. Pressing up on the joystick will shift up a gear with the four-speed gearbox. When idling at the start, you need to rev up the car near red line and wait for the starter guy woman standing in the middle of the road to drop their arms. If you shift into gear too early, you'll be disqualified for cheating, jumping the starter. You lose $100, then revert back to the call screen. Am I using the wrong button? No, that's the one. That's the one. Uh, optimal gear shifts and reaction time off the line are get necessary to get a good run. This isn't perfect and still a work in progress. Anyway, I uh, guess I'm done. I guess I'm after some feedback to see what people think. Up, down. Also, there are any features that people think are unnecessary or should be dropped. Here are some screenshots and the binary to test out. Thanks. So, uh, he said the spray paint doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Which it doesn't. That is to race, mm -hmm. right? Call your friends. And that is to, parts. to put parts, which don't do anything, mm -hmm. like, to the car. But yeah, they yeah. do show it being improved. I would think you, having them a... do something to the car would be the easy part. And this part oh, yeah. is the hard part. Yeah, all the graphics so the parts and the animation. Yeah, all the hard parts done. All the screens are done. So I don't know what this is. No idea. Um, but we'll show off all the animations here. Uh, then there's something that looks a little bigger that goes on top. I don't know anything about cars, <laughs> so I'm lost here. And then there's another even bigger thing. So I guess it's levels, and they all cost. Does the money go down? Nine three three six hundred. Let's yeah. buy the big one. It yeah, does. So he's implemented go, yeah. that the cost of them. Yeah. It's just that you have so much money <laughs> that you just. Well, it actually started with. Um... Oh, you can't actually. Reset. He hasn't implemented reset. You started with twelve hundred, but it just oh. rolls down oh. for testing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he says this is the easiest guy. He's got some screenshots, and he has pointed out that's the easiest guy to race. Ah. That's the medium, and that's the hard guy to race. Right. So let's pick. I was guy. going with medium all the time. So this is the revving. So you can see, I press the button, it goes into red line. Yeah, but that's his red line. Yours doesn't seem to do anything. Yep. No, because you're blue. I'm blue. Yeah, I'm blue, but my revving is on the left, it seems. Like, watch, Maybe. It, watch it again. I saw that. I just didn't understand what it was, but okay. So I'm not pressing anything. So what's on the right, then? His or speed? Speed, maybe. Oops, I blew it. Maybe. <laughs> you blew it. Oh, what? why is he moving? Just the guy's arms down. Oh, what? And to switch, you have to be in the red. Like, it doesn't let you switch just yet. Um, okay. When you're not in, when you're in the green, it's like, no, you don't want to be in the green. I think it should let you switch and just make it terrible. Like, you're kind of slow. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so if, I, this, if I don't do anything. sound. We're not hearing the sound. But no, like, we're not. Let's turn it up a bit. So, if I rev. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that's speed. So there's four gears, and you shift up with by pressing up. So I don't think I've won anything. I haven't really been paying attention. Oh, 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 oh my top speed is better than his. How, oh, no, you can't still see his lost. top speed. Well, he's oh, ahead I see. Of me. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's You're gaining on him. Yeah. 
How about a countdown beep? Yes. Yeah, I definitely need a countdown. Yeah, that would be great. Because uh, uh, the guy's arms. Come on. Did I blow my engine? That maybe Is that why it stopped. No, it's only ten seconds of racing. I can't beat the easiest guy yet. I know that it's only ten seconds of racing because I heard you say it. bit better. Come on, come on! Wow, even the easiest guy is hard. Maybe yeah. I'm maybe I got it backwards. Maybe the blue guy's easy. Let's try that guy first. Oh, I can't race him. No. Race that guy. Medium. I think you're always racing red. The car's red. I just think he has it. Maybe he hasn't implemented the different difficulties yet yeah. at all. Yeah. Oh my god, it's hard. Welcome, Styles Gaming. Yes, it's shifting just like Dragster. Yep. I've got to at least try and beat this guy. So, you don't have to hold the button. But it does go down if you don't. And you can't shift unless it's in red. He always seems to have an advantage. He goes yeah, off the line so much faster. I think you might be expecting it to be balance. At, <laughs> and I think maybe balance is not where he put his effort into at this point. And so the sound is in there. It's just that it's turned down. Yeah. yeah, I don't think it has the beeping for the start. No, but being able to tell when to shift is... Essential is, yeah. is, but what I'm saying is that it's already in there. He doesn't Let's need to add that. See if there is a countdown sound. No, no. but maybe that's the fun of it, like waiting. Yeah, and, and I also think it is kind uh, of fun. drag racing or like racing like is this like that, is it? there's a person just there and they drop the flags. There yeah. is no beep beep beep. This, that's this isn't you go flag. when you go. Yeah, yeah. Red car cheats, yeah. He is definitely cheating. Like, he has a, a higher speed off... Or he just has a better car. Literally, he just has a better car. I can't. I can't do it. But you would if it wasn't 10 seconds. <laughs> the point yes, is Yes, I that, would. The point is that it's not finished yet. Yeah, True. Think, but do you think he would... No, I don't think I don't think I would put in balancing the race. <laughs> but I can't beat him at all. Oh. Yeah, so the, this isn't the game yet. It's it's like <laughs> oh, the, in oh. the middle, right? Uh, that was the closest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I can't race him because I don't have enough money. That makes. You have to shift earlier, maybe, and not at the red line. I always thought yeah. you have to shift at the highest RPM possible. Is the race beatable? Oh, here's 2600. Uh, yeah, I could always add that. Yes, difficulty is a little hard at the moment. <laughs> is it even beatable? Can you beat it? I was going to go for eye reaction time, like in a real drag race. I think that's yeah. I think I think it's I, correct. Yeah, that's that, much more fun yeah, than a the, countdown. The the countdown is familiar and would be easier, but like I would I would go with what you're doing and just make it slightly more visible. Maybe I don't even know if that's necessary. I think no. I think it's good. I think it's. I think exactly so long as people know what to look for, then that's all they need. Like I somehow yeah. highlight. Uh, somehow draw attention to the fact that you're aiming for that or something. Yeah. That's all. That's all. He says he can be it. Maybe I'm not letting it go high enough. I'm going to try that next time. Like, I almost do it. Almost. I'm going to verge on one magic. I don't think you can blow your engine. One more higher? 
Oh, you can't blow your engine yet? No. Okay, so now I'm going to just rev it up to the top. Boom. It's got to have been perfect. Ugh. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> oh my god. I don't god. know. I, I, I'm having difficulty figuring out how you're so emotionally engaged <laughs> when you know that he's working on it. It's no, he says it's beatable. No, yeah, barely. He said it's ultra hard. <laughs> but then and I the re but the reason it's ultra hard is because it's not finished yet. <laughs> uh, not because uh, not because this is a game that he's worked to balance and that you're yeah. somehow lacking. It's just like <laughs> I am lacking. He can do it and I can. Oh my god. <laughs> when it just hits the red now. No, that's much worse. Not much worse, but a little worse. Yeah, as soon as it hits the top red, that's been the best so far. pixels away <laughs> anyway okay i give up i can't do it um bring the man's closer to see his hands i don't have a problem with seeing his hands uh i would make it more obvious because you now know but for one thing the first time you play it you don't want someone yeah. to be frustrated by maybe a flag he has two flags in his hands like yeah. maybe that yeah but I, I don't find it a problem like i stare at the guy but in the real game, you could blow your engine by revving it too much. This one, you can't blow your engine. So it's you're going to have to look at both at the same time. So maybe make it more obvious, but we'll see. But the engine you can hear with your ears. You don't need to watch it. That's true. As soon as it gets into dark red, it does change tone. Yeah. So yeah, you could do that. Yeah, I stuck with four to keep it era correct. Yeah, four gears. But great start. It's really fun looking, especially... There's going to be a lot of game balancing that's going to have to happen between how much you can win in a race, how much the parts are, how easy those three guys are to beat. Mm -hmm. um, don't know what else could be added. He's got all the basic elements. Mm -hmm. um, you could add in another, another game where you're just by yourself and you don't have an opponent where you pick up things on the street or something. I don't know if that's necessary. It'd be like a bonus round after you win certain races i don't know just an idea to throw it out there because you already have the driving part or if you lose you jump out of the car and you like that's right yeah Little or animation. if you're playing for pink slips you then go, you get out Damn. and you smash your car up because you're a poor loser that's right yeah. and then you hand them the <laughs> little animations that would be cool, <laughs> would be cool. <laughs> great start and he did an amazing game with bass fishing tournament so i i expect this is this is going to be just the same with because there's a lot of game balancing with bass fishing tournament the speed of that you pull the fish up how much they're worth the the ability to dodge the other fish it was really really well done so so let's take a look at the last game which is called the end <laughs> and it is a port from uh an arcade game uh, and if you want to check out the arcade we we went into that the uh, last episode when we uh, premiered the game mm. and we we're so very lucky that um, Raymond C allowed us to have an exclusive premiere of this game nice last episode so this is uh, release candidate 2 which he messaged me an hour before the show saying hey, I've got a new build get it on the show <laughs> yeah thanks for hanging out 2600 and uh, answering our questions. Yeah, definitely a solid base. A lot of balancing and math to be done. Yeah. So this is a great port from the arcade. Um, mm. So he emailed me an hour before the show. He says, hello, James. I've updated the game. Some bugs were found and fixed, and the alien bullets were improved a little bit more on the way they are fired. So 
So shoot everything. Shoot the dudes. What they're going to do is steal your blocks. What? Those are my blocks! That's right. And then bring them up to the top, and they're slowly spelling out the word end. Um, you do have safety in that you can hide behind the blocks. Um, the original initial release only had the pink guys stealing blocks, but now the pink and the yellow guys can steal the blocks. So it makes it makes it a bit more dynamic because before I only had to concentrate on shooting the yellow, uh, the pink guys. Uh, so his post in the Atari Age forums. Hello all, There's a new, here's a new homebrew game I made for the Atari 2600. I named The End 2600. It's based on the 1980 Konami version of the arcade The End. Attached you'll find Release Candidate 1, which he's updated today to Release Candidate 2. He just posted it just before the show, so you can all run out and get it afterwards. Objective, to destroy the aliens attempting to steal bricks from your uh, defense bases. The aliens will arrange the stolen bricks to spell out END at the top of the screen. You start with start the game with three spaceships. An extra ship will be awarded when you reach 5,000 points. Use your joystick to move your spaceship left and right and press the button to fire at the aliens. And I would suggest holding the button down because you may have stray bullets that accidentally hit the guy. Yeah, but then you can't aim. That's true. It is a trade-off. You can't get the precision you want. Um, I find I do better with just throwing bullets at them and then timing the release of the bullet with aiming at the guys. But um, one thing that I would say is that it's tricky that you move at the same speed as them. It means that there are times when you just have to give up. Like you literally yeah. can't catch them. Yeah. So like yeah. you have to you have to anticipate them. I don't know. You do have to anticipate them. Yeah. And I'd have to study the original game to see if the horizontal movement of the aliens matches your horizontal movement because that's a big factor. Because if in the arcade you can move faster than them on the lower levels, but maybe get slower in the they get they speed up in the higher levels, that would change the gameplay quite a bit. Uh, use your joystick move left and right, button to fire at the aliens, game is over when you're all your spaceships are destroyed, or end is spelled out by the aliens. I find that I die more on getting shot than the end being spelled out, but he has changed the game uh, quite a bit since uh, we played it last, so it may come into the factor that those brick-stealing aliens might get uh, to spell out the end bit quicker. And, uh, the points. Each alien destroyed uh, scores 40, 60, or 100 points. Destroying the aliens carrying a stolen brick doubles the score. Destroying the mothership scores 10 to 100 points, plus the same amount are rewarded for each brick. How do you destroy, destroy the mothership? Uh, that's in the fifth level. Oh, I see. So you have to defeat four waves of these guys. And as you, uh, if you can see on, this, on the mothership at the top that is releasing the aliens, it actually has the colors of the aliens, um, and it depletes those colors as it releases them. It doesn't match perfectly with the colors, but it's more of an indicator of how many uh, enemies you have left to kill. Other details, each level is represented by a wave. Every five waves, the mothership will come down and attack, attack your spaceship. If you destroy it, a round of five waves will be completed. When a new round begins, the aliens will have to start spelling out the end all over again, so it gets reset. So you're at the last alien. There you go. Second wave. Um, and the number of aliens on the screen increase. I think it was just three to begin with, now there's four. And I think it goes up to six. In the arcade, I think there's eight or ten. I think it might be ten. This game is complete and fully playable. It has 40 levels and is fast and very challenging. The game is not exactly in graphics as the arcade version, but the gameplay is. I also have added some animations that are not in the arcade. Hope you enjoyed as much as I did making it. Please tell me your feedback about the game and let me know if the game is too easy or too hard or if you find bugs in the game. Let's see those high scores. And let's see what the high scores are right now and see what we have to shoot for. So... What do we got here? Somebody got 44,000, which is... It's 
done by S. Ramirez, who usually watches the show. I don't know if he's here right now. He is, he wins almost all the tournaments. He is an expert game player. Oh, that was close. Um, so that one is uh, one to shoot for. 21,000, uh, 15,000. So S. Ramirez has the top score so far with the 44, what was it, 44,000. Funny, the uh, space aliens look like uh, land crabs when they have <laughs> one of your cubes. When they pick up the cube. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Steve is good at video games. Yes, he is. He's very good. So like I said, I mean, you're on wave two now, right? Yeah. And they've spelled out, mm, I'd say, a third of the end. Really? Yeah. They have all, taken almost all my thingies. Oh, it resets. Oh. After they, um, after they steal it, um, you build up the base again. So it's that, that never ends. So you don't have to worry about how many, um, they've, cubes. how many cubes have been taken. It's more about how many cubes have been used at the top of the screen to build the uh, spell out the word because you can shoot them as they steal them so it's not a one-to-one -one correlation nice oh uh, i think i only died for the first time there though i think so you still have yeah and you got a bonus life at five thousand. uh the original game has no facility to reclaim cubes i think it does reclaim them no not to get them back down at the bottom, but you can shoot the guys when they have the cubes. Once they have them, it's it's not the end of the world. Uh -huh. um, that's funny, because that guy can't steal cubes, because he's orange. <laughs> so he would never have taken one. So now you're up to five guys on level three, and then level four will have six guys, and that's where it maxes out. On the first iteration um, that he passed to me, some of the guys would get stuck above the end and they wouldn't be able to pass through the bricks. But he, he fixed that right away before we premiered it on the show. So I did some uh, game testing at the beginning when he sent it to me. The graphics are really good. The gameplay is really good. Um, so everything's there. So it's a really good port. The only things that could be uh, improved, but I don't think he has the ability to do that because this was made in Batari Basic, is have all the different enemies be able to steal the cubes. Because in the arcade, it could be any of the guys. But in this version, uh, you can only have the pink guys and the yellow guys steal, steal the cube. Which is enough. I don't know if it matters. It depends on, like, so long as they steal just as often. I, yes. Like, I guess it could matter, but I don't see that it would. Not much. Really. Because right now you have... For me, it doesn't because I don't have the skills to, like, kill anybody I want. I basically right. kill them at random. But right now there's, there's four possible guys that can be stealing them. And not all four are going at once. Um, so he could easily increase the number of guys that are stealing them. I don't know if two at once have ever I'll have to watch for that because in the arcade they can have multiple guys stealing at once one guy has it he just dropped it one guy has it i'll have to keep my eyes open for it oh so they have like two more lines to two and a half more lines to build for the end it's, it's going to be close. It's going to be close. Oh. Oh. oh, no. Well, you got an extra life, I think. I think it's every 5,000. Start shooting them. I, I don't think I got an ex another extra life. No? Okay. No. Hmm, maybe it's just at 5,000. I, I just... Maybe I did, but I... I I don't think so. I don't think I you think died only, enough. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I didn't think that I'd died enough. Let's see the phrasing again, that he uh, Stealing, brick stealing bastards. Oh, get and they're back undead. here. I don't get to finish. Oh well. 
an extra ship will be awarded when you reach 5,000, not mm. every 5,000. Only at 5,000. Oh, thank you. We've got the developer in the chat. Thank you for joining us. Now your bullets don't quite reach the Hi. enemy base at the top. Almost. No! <laughs> Bastard. No. Oh my god, he's going for it. Oh my god. It's on a rampage. Stop it. I... I still do notice, and I don't know if I made a note to him before, uh, a note to you before, that if one of the guys steals a brick, I notice that he goes on a brick-stealing rampage until you shoot him again. Like, you can see, he's, like, going straight for the bricks and, and yes. heading straight for the top again. And now he's not, because I shot him. He's like, oh, I gotta be play it safe now. It's dangerous. And he gets, like, super brave when he gets his first brick makes sense yeah i guess but is that like a, a component of the arcade game mm -hmm. or is that just something that you programmed in there like he just goes on oh, they also, bastard they also kind of look like cow heads <laughs> ah, got him. do they oh with the horns yeah yeah fun little animation two frame pincer animations I guess they... Not a crab. They turn upside down when they get a, a thingy. Oh, do they? That's what's yeah. happening. Oh, okay. They carry it above their heads. It's funny. In um, space shooters, they usually portray the enemies that you're shooting as spacecrafts rather than the actual creatures themselves floating in space. In which? You, in... Um, Arcade games, yeah. Um, space space shooters specifically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of the enemies are portrayed as the crafts that the enemies are in, yeah, rather yeah. than the enemies themselves. Even yeah. though they look like bugs, yeah. Um, when they do the artwork on the side of the uh, arcade cabinet or for the promotional stuff, mm -hmm. you always see a little dude in the spacecraft. Yeah. Um, and. A lot of aliens are portrayed as like they have organic based ships rather than, you know, things like humans would make out of metal and other objects. They like, especially in like Alien, you know, the, uh, the movie series yeah. Alien. The corridors are all like built up as, um, you know, organic material. But that's because that is different in that the aliens, the non-intelligent, well, non-sophisticated aliens yeah. did that. They then turned yes, it into a hive. They true. Turned, yeah. They're not the pilots of the ship or anything. They're yeah. just, they just happen to be aboard the ship and they're just making it into their hive yeah. to hatch more eggs and make their queen comfortable. Um, but in Starship Troopers it's the actual bugs in space right like when they're sending down the big the bombs from space it was the aliens like spitting i don't know from if they space. i don't recall yeah they i don't recall them or were they showing, on land i don't recall them showing the aliens in starship troopers movie uh in space oh no they're on the land they're shooting on the land shooting space. up into space yeah yeah that's true but they were firing rocks somehow they just never showed how they did it mm. But the aliens never went into space in Starship Troopers, did they? What's up? The aliens never went into space. In they Starship never showed Trooper. them in space, but they but they were able to launch asteroids into space. Yeah. Or Something. more realistic would be that they somehow launched them from space into mm. a specific direction. But uh, but the point is they haven't made that clear because they were portraying the aliens as a threat to humanity in Starship Troopers, the propaganda, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, we must defeat, the, the, they're threatening our way of life, we must defeat them. The thing is, the movie is like, it's weird because it's all about like, the fascists and how fascist they are. Yeah. But, <laughs> but they're not, but in the movie, they, they're not wrong. Uh, 
You know what I mean? No, I mean like they're. I don't know. No, no. The aliens, they're they're, they're not shown to be wrong. They don't show that. Oh, the alien bugs really were nice and friendly. Oh no, no, no. No, like all the things they say. Sure, it's propaganda, but also there really is an enemy, and so it's there, it's there not is. really much of it. It's not a very good example <laughs> of how fascism fascism is bad. Is my point. Well, um, the the humans are going to their planet. Like they're going to another planet to fight these aliens, and it's the aliens' planet. Yeah, and they but probably the, have resources on that planet. But that if you want. watch the movie, you'll find that they mobilize after the aliens send a giant rock to Earth. They oh, do not. They, they, or is that I'm propaganda, not, though? Well, Buen Buenos Aires is destroyed. Okay. And <laughs> um, I guess it's hard to. I, I mean, if you watch that. it again, you'll see that you know. Um, yeah, because the main character is from Buenos Aires, and he's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I'm, what I'm saying it could is have been that, the, like, it isn't a very good fascism is bad example, is what I'm saying. Like, like cut, clear cut. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you could theorize that the government destroyed Buenos Aires on purpose. You could, but the movie doesn't suggest that, and so you would be, you would be like, doing the weirdest conspiracy theory ever, <laughs> yes. given that there's no evidence to suggest <laughs> that that's what happened. And that would be very <laughs> extreme to do that is to destroy a major city just so you could ta get the resources from another planet. Um, you would have to be... I, I would think they would think up a different scheme to convince the population other than destroying a complete city. Uh, D-Train, it's not that the movie conclusively said that they were the bad guys, but if you have a bad guys in a movie and it doesn't conclusively show that they're not the bad guys, then yeah. from the perspective of the movie, they are the bad guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if they if they shot a, something to Earth, or they said it was, maybe it was just a, a you you a could meteor. explain it. You could explain it. it. You could have a you could have a sequel that explains that. Oh, they're not really bad, and really it was the humans. But that didn't happen, is what I'm saying. And so, <laughs> like the status quo is that the, you don't just assume that your side is the bad guys just because. Uh, that fits some <laughs> outside the movie narrative. That's all I'm getting. No, that's at. true. You have you have the ol only information you have is from the movie, right? Yeah. Or, or the book, if yeah. if you. Want if it to... was real life, you would look for more information. But the movie <laughs> is the if if the book or the movie is the source of the information. That's all you have. Then you're it's just rampant speculation <laughs> to, to to say that oh the bugs are not so bad. <laughs> but but I would have the belief that it's like a, a random rock from space, and then. They use that as a, a good excuse to invade the planet, and it and it's been done before, even in U.S. history. That oh, this thing happened. Let's go invade that country, and it's unrelated to what happened. And where? Sorry, which example is this? Oh, 9/11, right? They, oh, let's invade Iraq. Uh, yep. And it's like. How do those two go together? Okay. Oh well, the way that they went to the way that they actually went together is that they wanted to go to Iraq and get the stuff. Uh, get well, the oil. Or they always wanted to go to Iraq. They, they had the oil. Yeah. They already had the oil. Oh okay. I mean, like, I don't know. I guess maybe they're trying to secure it. I, I don't. Know. I don't know. Anyway, it's. I could see them coinciding in the movie. Say a meteor, say a, meteor it, a meteor came down. Yeah. Not from the the bugs. They could say that, but they didn't. They, no. they like it was it, it came from the bugs. And the <laughs> characters the characters the main characters were the ones that encountered it. It like zoomed by the ship or something. Mm. As I recall. I know that they encountered one I I oh, don't like, know if the one that I think it was the one that destroyed Buenos Aires was the one that zoomed by the ship when they were in hyperspace. It was I mean, it's it's like, the aliens have... Oh, watch, it's going to be the mothership now. Oh, no, after this one. No. It's, it's a bonus level. The aliens have the technology to throw the rocks into space. They, they show that right on screen. What's that? They show that the aliens ha uh, have the technology to throw rocks into space. They don't show it, but uh, they, they say they have it. Okay, so yeah, that makes me believe it less that they did throw a rock to Buenos Aires. No, I, we already went over this. It's a movie. <laughs> it's entirely what what the the data is entirely there in the, in the story. Yeah. And 
I'll have to rewatch that. It's such a good film. It's pretty fun. I don't know. So much. I don't know. I, I hesitate to say good. It was fun. It was, I, yeah, I think it was. I, I think, think it counts it, as good, but it was definitely fun. That's oh, the thing so I can, much fun. I, can I, say I for laugh sure. so much to yeah, that yeah. movie. It's so funny. Yeah. And that's why I think it's. Yeah, I, I really I enjoyed it. I liked it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, the first wave, or the first five levels, I find pretty easy. Uh, the second wave, it it ramps up quite a lot. But I haven't played this new version, so maybe it's a bit more balanced. Like, I die on level 7, I think, is the highest I've got. So it, the difficulty increased quite a bit. So if anything, I would say the difficulty should be higher in the first five levels. Or have a setting where there's, you know, on the difficulty switches, where one is easy and one's hard, because you didn't you didn't make it um, to the to the ship. But damn it! It's the, the fact that I made it past the first level uh, suggests that maybe it needs to be harder. <laughs> uh, maybe yeah. As a general rule, uh, I shouldn't do well. <laughs> Although this joystick is much better. Oh, it's a great joystick. And I've actually gotten used to it over these couple months that I've had we've had to play with it. But I still do like the Genesis controllers. It's all right. I just like how big this one is and how when I move the joystick, no part... My hand just rests there and no part of the of my movement disrupts the, the controller. You know, so it's like... Here's I don't the, have those. Oh, yeah. Here's the big bad guy. And how you defeat him is you shoot him in the center. So if you have some protectors left, it's actually handy. And then you get the bonus for each of the ones they didn't get. Ah. And then you start over. And now it the, goes crazy. The end is further away. Yes. Yeah, it starts over, so you get to start again. So good luck to me. The bullets come down quite a bit faster. It's like sparse rain. Yeah. <laughs> so it's sparse rain still. <laughs> sparse rain. So mostly it's about defense at this point. Point. A little bit more defense. You have to still be on the offense by shooting the guys who are stealing your bricks, because you will die if you don't take aim at those guys, because they go they go a lot faster building the building the words up. Oof. And the bullets go over top of each other too. Let's see if he fixed the bullets a bit better. Oh, he did. Yeah, because in the uh, initial version of the versions of the game. He had the bullets always come down exactly where you were. And it looks like in this one he has fixed it more towards the arcade where they come in a general area where you are rather than where... Because if one's coming down and, and you're dodging that one but there's already one to the side of you, you're going to run into that one. So it makes it a little bit harder to dodge the bullets. Or especially if you're moving across the screen and it's a fast one coming down, you're going to run into that. I shouldn't have moved that way. Ugh. There's that little pause before you come back that they can still keep stealing your bricks. It's like, ah, come on, stop stealing my bricks. Got to get back in the game. See, I'm still on the first wave of the sixth level. I'm still on the sixth level. Oh, and it adds uh, five extra aliens that you have to defeat every level. So it ramps up quite a bit. Up to, I think, 90... That one came so fast. In behind the other bullet. So you can see what I'm saying, like... The spaceship is smaller now. Yeah, it's released all its aliens. Oh! Yeah. Watch it Watch it when we go to the next level. See, it fills back up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I get it now. Super cool. I, I, I actually thought that's what was happening, but I... So if you shoot a yellow one, it doesn't one to one correspond. Oh, okay. It kind of goes that's, down. That's fine. It goes down in in the layers. So the top layer goes first, which is all pink. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's super super. Oh my god! But good score. Watch, watch, watch. Do, 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 do. They all get recalled. They all take off. That's pretty cool. <laughs> There's four sequels to Starship Troopers, but they're none none of them are done by Verhoeven. 
That's his name, right? I I feel like in the world of movies that didn't happen, that there are no sequels to Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> there's no sequels to The Matrix. There's no sequels to Starship Troopers. Starship. Uh, the what Matrix, else? The Matrix. The Hobbit didn't exist. The people who made The Matrix <laughs> made those sequels. They, they happened. Did. They're annoying. But uh, <laughs> Alien, Alien 3. Oh, Alien 3, no. Um, Alien 1 and 2. Prometheus, no. All of the Terminator movies that were between Terminator 2 and, I guess, the most recent one. Which, which has also been kind of panned as well. Oh, I haven't I've, seen it. I've but... only had review from one person who saw it, and they said that it was really good. I haven't seen it, so I it's, can't It's way it better. All. Let's... I think the reviews I've heard, it's way better than all the other ones in between. Who made it? Uh, James Cameron. Okay, so it counts. Yeah. It counts. It's, it's in The, the it's number in one thing, the number one thing is, is it like... Is, does it have the vision? Does it have yeah. the f original feel? And, yeah. Um, or is it just someone who wanted to make a, a, a cash, sequel? Yeah. Cash and in. Or they wanted to make a sequel, but they didn't understand or they... Yeah, or messed up. Or the I don't world. approve. How about that? I if I yes. approve, it counts, and if I don't approve, it doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> people are saying that about the Mandalorian too. They're like, "This is so good that it's like forget all those other movies that have come out since the original three. Um, that it's like I'm not going to get Disney Plus because I don't. Is that what it's called, Disney Plus? Because <clears throat> I don't. Uh, I don't care about all the rest of it. I do want to watch the Mandalorian it's gotten such incredible um, feedback and ratings but all the other films like I, I've stopped I've stopped watching the Star Wars films they just they just don't feel like anything they're just not interesting I don't care about anybody in them no, I I, I... I Have you enjoyed agree any that, of the other ones? Yeah. I yeah. mean, the new Star Wars movies are Same. better than the prequels. Oh, God, by far. Oh, my God. I won't, yeah. I won't like, rave about them. Although I liked Rogue One. I Rogue liked One it, was I liked, probably, I liked it a lot. Like, I, I've watched it lots of times. That was probably the best out of all of them. Because it was just darker and just more down to earth. The and, darker part of it, though, is one of the least <laughs> good arguments. Because Star Wars isn't dark. No, it's not. That's true. And so, like, if you're going with what is this series, I just like darker movies. and oh, I'm going to make it real dark. <laughs> In fact, some of the dark things about it were the things I hated about it the most. Mm. Yeah, that's not connecting the chat. I think there's. Let's bring up the chat on here because there yeah. we go. We've been missing a billion things. Or no, a couple. No. Good score. <laughs> Good score. Yes, thank you. That it's not bad. It's not bad. I mean, it's not the top, but nobody can. S. Ramirez 2008 is damn good at playing games. Um, I have a soft spot for parts of the first Hobbit movie, which I saw, but it's like uh, mostly not soft spot. No. <laughs> In fact, I didn't even watch the next two. Oh, because... no, I skipped the next two because it's But I heard that like so they got better, but the first one just made me so annoyed with how, how desperately they tried to make it all about Lord of the Rings instead of just <laughs> doing it in The Hobbit, which was a super fun story. Anyways, whatever. The barrel scene, I was just like, I'm done. I'm out of here. Garbage. Terrible. It was like a video game. Like a, a very unrealistic video game. Yeah, I thought that with uh, with J.J. Abrams, J.J. Abrams, when I heard he was on it, I was like, it's either going to be really good mm. or I'm going to fucking hate it. <laughs> Sorry for the swearing. That's <laughs> no, okay. Um, because, I yeah, mean, he I didn't did see lost. episode nine. Or I, uh, <laughs> and yeah. Alias, and both of those oh, were like he's done amazing things. No, but the, but I'm talking about how they weren't amazing in the end. Like how oh, like it end, was yeah. all about the it was all about the the like he didn't he didn't think things through. He doesn't go, no. oh, what is happening? He just goes, oh, what is spectacle, tension? We'll spectacle. throw some tension, and then we'll... It'll always be disappointing, because nothing can live up to this tension. Right. <laughs> That's right. I have no answer for these questions I've posed. I'll never forgive for Star Trek movies. Yeah. No. I, actually, actually, the third Star Trek movie was very close to perfect. Oh, really? Because it was exactly what you would expect from Star Trek, and... The first two movies could never could have not happened, and it still would have been that way. Like it ignored all mm -hmm. the nonsense and the fact that it's like you know the fact that it was like an alternate universe had nothing to do with the third movie. Uh, it's like it could have just been a Star Trek movie. I actually thought it was. I oh, I liked it. Maybe I'll have to check it out because I loved the Star Trek 
universe. Yeah, but and, I, and I, I like I'm so sick of like actual um, rebooting. I don't know whether actual rebooting. I'm sick of restarts of like a of a, a drive wipe. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like I'm sick of them starting from the seed and redoing it like the other one didn't happen. I but and at the same time I'm in love with all of the starting up again. So like <laughs> I think whether you like Doctor Who or not, the way right. they did it, we're just carrying on as though oh. the other stuff did happen. That's how yeah. you do it. And there's so it many is. shows coming out like that and lots of them are really they're perfect. They're yeah. exactly following suit like uh, Red Dwarf Red yeah. Dwarf is so good. And yes. when they came up and it's like, oh, they're it's like the same thing, only they're like older now. I was like, oh my God, this is the greatest thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they have excuses for every weirdness that happens yeah. in the show too. It's like, I mean, oh, it's their it, alternate universe. Yeah. Or they've been rebuilt from a, from, you know, a, a cell and, oh, you know, the ship rebuilt it. We're, yeah, it's craziness. But yeah, it's great. They just, they get older. They're still in space. They'll never get home. Um... Oh, okay. So that yeah, he was... does ridiculous MacGuffins. Yeah, <laughs> I hate. Yeah. yeah, the worst thing about Lost is that, as like the last season was terrible, Ugh. but even in the last episode, I was watching it and I was like, "Oh, this is going to happen. It's actually going to turn out really good." And then it was the nonsense that did happen. It was like the wrong character became the new guardian, mm. and it was and all. Because visually, he wanted to have an ending where the the where it ended the same way it began, and right. that's the worst reason to do that. It, it was is. so terrible. Anyway, sorry. Uh, <laughs> rant. Talk, pause. Talking about <laughs> old old shows. Yeah. Um, so, good games today. Robot City, unbelievable. The end, so much fun. Uh, I can't see that. Street Rod. It's covered up with chat. Um, Street Rod 2600. This computer has no internet, that's why. Yeah, that's why. It's in the bottom corner there. Uh, any one of those. I don't know why it disconnected. It's a naughty, naughty. Next Red Dwarf is a 90 minute episode. <gasps> I haven't looked that up yet in a while. What's happening with that? Hmm. I don't like that. I didn't like the last extended one. But actually, it's better now I than I rewatched it. I rewatched it and. What was it called? I can't remember, but it was season it was three. Was season nine? Yeah, season and nine. It, and it was like, it was the Despair Squid episode. Which and one? while we were watching it, I completely forgot. Even okay, so the whole time it seemed like they were doing that stupid thing where they're like, "Oh, we're going back to Earth," and I, I really hate that. It's like you yes. watch the thing f to escape from Earth, yeah. and here they are dragging you back down to Earth again. Cheap, and, cheap production. Film it on Earth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, it was actually. It was actually really good. It's yeah. just that they they made me think that it was terrible. And so I, I was yes. annoyed by what they had done. And so I wasn't enjoying it because yes. I was annoyed by what they'd done. And I was so annoyed by that. Even though when it ended, it was like, oh, this, this is legit. But I forgot that this was legit. And so I continued to hate it for like years. <laughs> me too. And then I watched it again. And I was like, oh, actually, this is really good. I'm the idiot for back, forgetting that back it was to really Earth. good. That was back it, to Earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, called. Yeah. There's yeah. lots of cool concepts in it like they step into a world where they are tv stars yeah and they go to coronation street and it's like it's and crazy and my my <laughs> slash the viewer's failure is to think that they were just being dick writers doing yeah. the stupid thing instead of this is a giant clue that that can't happen yeah <laughs> i mean it's impossible yeah like it's totally just doesn't work i i am i'll just leave it oh no it's going somebody Oh. I I like that they have stuck to the fact that there has no been there's not been ever another human on the show. Ever. <laughs> well, they've been clones, they've been uh Oh, another cold. human than what? Then then a uh, Lister. No, cuz they had what's her face? Kachansky. Kachansky. Uh but she was created from like all the other people on the prison ship from like a, a speck of dust or something like there's no surviving human there's no evolved human sorry uh, how did she come back in like season six or uh, I, I, whatever or season it, seven? Oh my god i can't remember <laughs> i can't remember anyways yeah <laughs> anyways good show can't, can't can't wait for next red dwarf to come out yeah i'm um, very excited um 
And I believe they have both the writers back, which is the most exciting thing. Because I don't think they had both the writers in the last season, or did they? Because one yeah. one was all comedy, one was like the, all the drama and the hard sci-fi. Yeah, and... And, and then it, they, the, the hard sci-fi guy left. Yeah. And it went super silly. And it went super silly it because it was down. only the, the comedy stuff. Yeah. And it was like, it was that thing where I started watching the episode and I was like, oh, it's, look, it's Lister playing his part as Lister in oh, Red Dwarf. Like, yeah. it was like... Flanderization. Like, super... Yeah, Flanderization. That's the thing, yeah. Yeah, it's Lister playing Lister, Cat Lister. playing the cat. That's right. Look how cat... Look how the cat I am! Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and then Rimmer, or, um... Well, what's his real name? He he left the show because he was kind of sick of sick of it. He is oh uh, yeah 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 because yeah. the writing was so one note yeah. over and over again. He's like, I don't want to play this character anymore if it's like that. But then the writing got better, and then he came back, and it's all better. But also, it's it is a we don't like it as the viewers, but it is a legit situation to be in where you're an actor and yeah. you want to be you want to like expand. Yep. And you can't because of the success you're having. <laughs> yes. It's that's a legit problem to have. Yep. You know what I mean? Like yeah. And uh it sucks for us, but like uh, I watched uh, a little YouTube clip on uh the actor Alf Alfon Al Alfonso from Fresh Prince. Mm -hmm. The um the guy who does the dancing and everything. Yeah, yeah. And he was talking about that. He was saying, I was so good on the Fresh Prince of Bel Air that People love that character so much. I'm I can't play anything else. Like he's so pigeonholed into that character. Um, it was just really interesting. It's to what it is. Hear is that it, perspective. The, the thing is, you're not. It's not really that you're pigeonholed into the thing. This is what happened. People want that from you. Yeah, but here's the thing. Yeah. They want that for you from you. That's it. And that's all. No, 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 no. <laughs> you're you're stepping ahead. Okay. So they want that from you. Yeah. You want to give them this. They don't want this, but do they not want this because because they want this, or is it that they don't want this because this isn't good? It could and the, be. And the sad truth is that in most of those cases, you're you're lucky enough to, and I'm not shitting on them. No, no. It's but it's like you found a thing that you were really good at and people wanted, and the hard truth is that you're not good at the other thing you want to be Quite and you possibly. want to be able to 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 roll this into that but yeah. you don't have like a right to like be successful on these other yeah. things when people don't want it and the reason they don't want it you can look at lots of actors who Tons. weren't pigeonholed and it's because when they moved on to another thing they were good at that other thing yeah and i'm again i'm not trying to be a dick it's it's just that like having success doesn't mean that you now get success and a perfect example will smith <laughs> He yeah, perfect gone, example. He's yep. on the same show. People yeah. knew him for that only. Yeah. Like, that was his thing. I mean, he was a, a rap star before that, but as an actor. As an actor. Yeah, he did he was, roll. He did roll. He, but he also continued to play that type of character. Mm -hmm, he mm -hmm. did play the character people wanted. Yeah. He was able, and by doing that, he was able to, like, roll more depth into it and get into other things. Yeah. But he didn't, he didn't, like. And now the two things aren't quite the same because the, of the two characters, one was a little more extreme, like the extreme, like mm, you yeah, know, is yeah. is harder to, to to go with than. But anyways, anyway, we digress. Yeah. Alfonso Ribeiro, yes, and he and he was uh, an accomplished person before. Um, he was on Broadway as a tap dancer as a kid and did commercials and a whole bunch of other stuff before that show. But that was his big breakout. So three three games we played today: Robot City. Uh, Street Rod 2600 and The End 2600. All great games. Obviously, we have to watch St Street Rod as it develops. And he adds more into it because that, right now it's it's just the basics. Everything is there, but there's no game balancing. Yeah, I can't. I couldn't even beat the easiest guy, which the easiest guy you should be able to beat. Yeah, yeah. With but, a bit I mean, it's a work in progress. And yeah. like he said, yeah, that's and, literally what he said was that he had that to work on. So um, for The End 2600, I, I think... The early levels are too easy, and I think the 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 sixth onward is too hard. I think it just because I died, I lost all my lives, almost except for one, which is a big mis, was just a simple mistake. I lost all my lives on level six. I don't know if level six is too hard, mm. but it it's it's a big jump. Right. Yeah. 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 It's a big jump from. So either keep level six as it is. Keep level six 
was I mean, you found it difficult, but like yeah. it's it was a big jump. I think like it was that it was, was pretty it was kind of too hard early on. Uh, too easy too, early on. Yeah. yeah. And so, as So I think it does need to ramp up. Yeah. And so you get prepared and more practice because I played it for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Like that game is not not a short game. So by by level 6, you it should be hard. Um so yeah, I think maybe it just needs to ramp up a bit quicker as you get to level 6. Um and Robot City, it's it's on release candidate 4. I we didn't find any problems with it. It's oh, yeah, it's it was wonderful. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. The two player options incredible. I was hoping AA was going to announce the release of Galaga on this episode. Me too. I actually have a website that's watching the Atari Age store and emailing me updates anytime one little piece of code changes. It's updated me twice, but nothing visible. So he's doing little things in the background. But it's imminent. And also a new Atari Vox is being released as well which I'm guessing it should be fixing the problems that we we're having with Wizard of War cutting out uh, with the voices. So I used my math in the speed up ramp in um, RC, Robot City. Speed increases asymptotically. <laughs> oh, that's a hard word. Asymptotically. Mm. I don't even know what that means. But um, um, yeah, the ramp up I think is good. It's very subtle in Robot City because everything just moves faster and his AI changes he says that it makes better decisions on which direction uh, to go for you that's cool so yep soon soon the Atari age all these new games up above there that you can't quite see you can see the bottom you can see amoeba jump <laughs> <laughs> sliver of amoeba jump the blue box and crystal quest just beside it right above Darcy's head um, yeah, playing, playing went four playing times until, to the arcade. Ah, Need to go back again, though. I have a Satan's Hollow top score. Nobody's beat it yet, but I'm very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and some other games. I have to beat my uh, Bosconian score. I think I'm second on Bosconian, but I know I can be first. All right, so thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, good day. Thrust 26, Arena Foot, RC70, The D Train 37, Spiceware, Nathan Strum, Raymond C. Thank you. I love the developers hanging out in the chat of the games we're playing uh 2600 another developer of of the games uh who else paper mario had to take off a little bit earlier thanks for hanging out i supposed to, uh i think that's all the ones on the screen and thank you for all the people that are lurking as well that's english you should know Oh, asymptotically. the asymptotically? Yeah, I know it is something I should know. But there's lots of words in the English language. I don't there know them all. Tens of thousands of them, in fact. And I know all the common Hundreds ones. Hundreds of thousands are monthly. Uh, oh, asymptotically. It's a line that approaches a curve but never touches it. So um, there's a max out, I'm guessing, he has on the top speed. And it starts off rapidly increasing towards it mm. and then the difficulty slows down as it gets closer and closer i i i know that that graph but i didn't know the name of it i'm sure i've heard it before so took us took us if that's an english word it's definitely borrowed because it's got umlauts is that what those are called right yeah umlauts <laughs> i don't know what that means it's Look that up. Or German, took us. Is that ass? That's what I That's think it is. That's definitely a borrowed word. That's what I think it is. Oh, it's bye. Oh, okay, never mind. But there is a bye, cheers, ciao. Okay, well, that's not the word I thought. Oxford says 171,400 words, not hundreds of thousands. That is. That's one. Yeah, hundreds. There's, yeah. There's only 1. one. 1.7 seven hundreds. <laughs> There's only one one hundreds. One point seven hundreds of words. <laughs> like it could be point seven hundreds of words. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't even know if I could say that technically there are hundreds of words. <laughs> hey, I'm K Smith. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. The last seconds. You can constantly not know a hundred thousand words and do just fine. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Which uh, is true because I don't think I know anywhere close to a hundred thousand no. words. No. Uh, so the last show of the year 
is next Wednesday. Because <gasps> I am going away. You're going to watch these cats. I am. Watch that they don't behave well, well I, badly. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean, I best. will witness their bad behavior. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> you definitely will. <laughs> Um, so we're going to do a Christmas-themed show next episode. So uh, we have some... Uh, we've got Frosty. Not the Frosty you think. It's a Berserk hack made by Isposta. We're going to play the 2019 X-Mess Invaders, which is a brand new show. Uh, if we could work all the technology. It's the random tangent show. <laughs> it is very <laughs> random tangent, this, this episode. Uh, we're going to play Reindeer Rescue because I want to get further in that. And I probably want to play one more game. So if anybody, <laughs> welcome back from your island. <laughs> yeah. Yes. He's from the island. Say hi, Pixel. Um, and yeah, the alien so, missile. Yeah, ramp it up earlier would be good. Yeah. I, th I think so. Just at least a little bit on wave four and five. So it somewhere in between or what it wave is two? and six. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how quickly things ramp up. Just like it just ra yeah. Ramps up needs to be ramped up a little bit faster. For sure. Yep. Yeah. But but it's good. It's just Cause, like yeah. Because I found the jump from five to six is is quite significant between those two. So you need to go four four and five up a bit. Uh <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do it that way. Asymptotically. Yeah, asymptotically. asymptotically. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Go for that one. If uh, I'm not crying, <laughs> if I'm not crying foul on <laughs> level one, <laughs> that's a. It's. I mean, I'm. I'm joking, but I'm not really joking. Yeah. <laughs> I am that bad. <laughs> if I, think if I can get past level start. one, if I can get past level one the first time I play it, that is a sign. It's too that easy. is a sign that it's too easy. That could be. Maybe just bump everything up. Just, yeah. just a hair. Yeah. Um, and then we'll be back on January 3rd. Because um, I also need some time off to work on the Atari Awards. Which is excellent. Which is coming February 1st. Um, so I'll have some of December. And then January we're going to come back. And we're going to take a look at all the games that we played throughout 2019. And then when they get nominated, we'll play some of the nominated games. So we'll be playing all that, do a retrospective kind of thing. And also pepper in new games that come out, because we don't want to miss any of those. So thanks for hanging out with us. Stay Frosty 1 or 2. No, it's just Frosty. We're just playing Frost. Oh, that's what the suggestion is. Whew. Yeah, I might do that, because I do want to get better at that. Frost, Stay Frosty 2 is so damn hard. Maybe I'll just play Fro Stay Frosty 1. So hard. It's <laughs> so challenging. Once you get up to a certain level, I can't remember what level it is. I think it's the double screen one where I always fail and Stay Frosty too. So damn hard. Good suggestion. And I love Stay Frosty because it's a platformer. So thanks for hanging out with us, everyone. Um, we'll be back next Wednesday with Erlen. And he'll be back in a long Eventually. time. I mean, you missed <laughs> last show because um, I had to go to the doctor's for my foot. That's right. So I had, I had the doctor's appointment that coincided, unfortunately, with a show. Yep. Um, but uh, it has actually been... Tomorrow will be two weeks since then. And they said it would be healed in two weeks. And it is about 95%. I can... That hurts a little bit, like doing the twisting motion. Uh, if you I, don't do stretches, and if you don't if you don't work it properly, it will stay 90-something percent healed forever. Forever, yes. <laughs> and that's how... I, it, will, it, it, will, it will heal asymptotically. <laughs> it will. It will. And it, like really, truly, to get yeah. to the 100%, you have to work really hard. Yeah. But asymptotically, you never get to 100%. Yeah, and that's what's going to happen. It's, but you it's will true. never get to 100%. No. But I do have to look up uh, exercises. She, she, My doctor said, um, just treat it like normal. Walk normally. Make sure you use it. Yeah, completely. yeah. But I think I need to push it more beyond that. Yep. You don't have to push it push it much, but a little bit. Yeah. If you get there, you exceed the speed of light. <laughs> yeah. Or at least match the speed of light. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we've delayed long enough. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Uh, it's been fun, and we'll see you next Wednesday. Bye-bye. Next year. Bye. We'll, we'll see him next year. <laughs> Bye-bye. It's always fun at this time.